Hello, Wanderers. Welcome to episode 222. Before we get started with today's episode, just a friendly little reminder. Go ahead and head on over to our YouTube page. Subscribe. We'd appreciate it. Check us out on TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. Uh, I don't think there's any more, is there, Dave? Mm-mm. We're there. I think that's it. Check us out. We'd appreciate you subscribing, following, and sharing out the quality content we create. The Wandering Dutchman Podcast. Where none of us are Dutch, but we all live in Holland, Indiana. Join us where we talk about what we all wonder about. This is the Wandering Dutchman Podcast coming to you from a freaking clean, spick and span smoker's lounge. The Wandering Dutchman! Yeah! Yeah! The Wandering Dutchman! Yeah! Yeah! Here we go! Into an ad from Silo Ridge, our title sponsor for episode 222. Let's hear a little bit more about Jason and the crew at Silo Ridge. Are you in need of excavation work in Spencer, Dubois, Perry, or Warwick counties? Look no further than Silo Ridge Excavating, proudly owned and operated by Jason Haycox. At Silo Ridge Excavating, we specialize in both commercial and residential excavation work. From land clearing to driveway installation, maintenance and repair, we have you covered. We also excel in drainage work, construction site prep, livestock fence installation and repair, and demolition work. With a commitment to communication and customer satisfaction, we offer free estimates to ensure that you're getting exactly what you need. Give us a call today at 812-639-0681 or visit our website at siloridgeexcavating.com to learn more. And don't forget to check them out on Facebook. Trust Silo Ridge Excavating for all your excavation needs. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank Bingo. you. We appreciate that. Today's date is March 21st. This will be airing on March 29th. We have reached the end of March, fellas. Congratulations. We are still here. Sitting at the center of the table, still representing the green bandana that smells like bad decisions, Boondock Saints, and Guinness, Dang. wearing the rose-colored glasses is our buddy, David Allen Smoker. Sitting across there, wearing the very white-collar shirt for such a casual evening, with the mustache and the stitches out of his foot, thanks to Dr. Travis Hubbock mm-hmm. of Indiana Foot and Ankle, our buddy, Big Mace. Yo, yo, yo. And yours truly right here is Casey. Squad. Yeah, that's taken off more than I like it, but I'm not going to pull up Barbara Streisand and the Streisand effect and let everybody know that I just don't like it. <laughs> hey, Hour One brought to you by Catering by Meyer. Let's hear what they have to say. Hour One of our program is proudly sponsored by Catering by Meyer. As we usher in the new year of 2024, a flurry of events awaits. Graduation parties, weddings, birthdays, family reunions, wedding anniversaries, and class reunions. The excitement is palpable, but so are the logistical challenges of planning these memorable occasions. But fear not, you don't have to navigate the complexities of these events or the planning alone. Say goodbye to stress and hello to simplicity by making just one call to Catering by Meyer. Let the experts at Catering by Meyer Take the reins and turn your vision into reality. Give them a call today to secure your spot and embark on a culinary journey that will exceed your expectations. Oh, hey. there we go. Hey, big there shout out go. to our buddies at Catering by Meyer and that wonderful meal at the uh, baseball dine and dance. Oh, that, yeah, that, that was uh, good. That uh, pecan chicken was uh, dynamite. Well, first time I was able to... Uh, Probably most of the fans of this show would think that uh, Big Mace is the mouth of the podcast. And, uh, you know, I he, thought you did well. He flapped some gums a lot. But I had the chance, uh, David Allen Smoker, to do a little auctioneering. Oh, dang. And uh, 
I was the first time around, not bad. But when the room works with you and you've had a few beers and you're just slinging product, Hell I, yeah. damn, it was good. I could have auctioned off about damn near anything. Wish I'd have seen that. Especially a, uh, probably a f- at least five or six more storage units. Yeah. yeah that one was tough. <laughs> <laughs> Never had to auction off a storage unit. Somebody got a uh, friend of the program. We'll call him a friend of the program. Got a hell of a deal. He bought a uh, probably a year lease on a 10 by 10. I think they said it was 18 months. Climate controlled bad boy. Yeah. For like what they get? 100 bucks. Yeah. Man, that's an off site man cave. My mom uh, and dad well, stopped for a beer. My mom on the and way dad home. have a 5 by 10. And another friend of the show, Cocky, Jay Cox, said that they have one for Quail Unlimited. And I'm thinking that he said it, that he just renewed the lease. It was like 800 bucks. Yeah. Expensive for, the year for like a little diet. Little yeah. Diet. It's a tough spot, but no, we got into the auctioneer in a little bit and you just let it flow right there. And I got uh, 100, 100. I got two. I got two. I got two. I got uh, three over there. I got uh, three, four, five. Six. I was standing in the back, uh, doing some of this shit. Oh yeah. You know, Andy McHugh looked at me like I was silly, but, but, uh, <laughs> I knew what I was doing and Casey knew what I was doing. Yep. Ha! Yep. You know? Hey, I, we forgot to introduce. We have a few uh, friends in the lounge. Yeah. Uh, still the only diabetic here yep. is our buddy, Couch Guy. That's right. Um, meat Man in the house. Meat, meat man. man is in the house. Our buddy, Mr. Cord O'Brien, is the Meat Man. Mm. Uh, if you see any of these uh, fine, delicious beef jerky products hanging around, uh, the name slips me right now. I'm having a freaking brain fart. Hanging fart-y. around. Huh? Mingy. What'd you say? Beef jerky. I Mingy. couldn't think of Mingy, Mingy. to save Mingy, my Mingy, life. Mingy, Mingy, Mingy. Uh, buy a little Mingy. Our buddy Cord rocking a kind of cool mustache over yeah. there. I like it, too. And a I lady gonna... in the house. Yeah. A lady oh, in the house. Lady. Mama Smoke. Miss uh, Mama Smoke's in the she house. Is. That's right. Well, not in the house. Like, she's here. She's yeah, not yeah, in the yeah, house. Yeah. She's in the Smoker's Lounge. Yeah. yeah. So we have a few guests here. We got a sandwich uh, station out here, too. We... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yikes. Oh. Shots fired. But anyways, yeah, the dining dance was cool. Uh, big thank you to some local uh, Raider baseball product. Pro, prod, da, da, da. <sighs> been a long day. Been da, long da, week. Da, 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 da. Uh, products. Hey. Uh, obviously, Mr. Colson Montgomery uh, donated a really unique piece that's found a new home. Uh, Alex Grauman, uh, former Raider, uh, professional major leaguer, played in uh, major league here in the United States and then uh, Japanese professional baseball league. And then um, we had uh, Mitch Stetter. Yeah, Royals gear. I yeah. thought it would be stuff from the Brew Crew, but it was kind of neat seeing the Royals stuff. If it would have been Brewers, I would have been on it. Yeah, that would have been. Yeah, I thought I thought Alex Garman's jersey was pretty cool because yeah, of, it was just yeah. the Jap- it, Japanese, Japanese league. league. Yeah, so it had some writing on there, Dave. I didn't know. And that how to read. Uh, was it the Reds ball? Yeah, Hunter the, Green. Yeah, Hunter Green. Coach from the B, Reds. fan Coach of the program. B, yeah. yeah, he. he, he uh, he flexed the old wallet muscle well, he on, did. on that he, unit. He, loos- he, he loosened was, that baby up. He was all about it. So I believe his son, Jake, I think that's his name. Huge Reds fan. A huge Reds Both fan. Big are. stats guy. Big yeah. numbers guy. Yeah. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but I think it was fun. Had by all. It was a good uh, good fundraiser. The band, uh, Dave and... Dave and Ray, man. Dave and Ray. Never heard of him. What? Yeah. Local legends. Listen, How many times did we go to the leukemia listen, dance? I, I missed... Softball signups. I miss daddy daughter dance. Yeah. I no you clue were in the hell Michigan. These people are. You were in Michigan for a long time. Well, not necessarily, but like college and then Michigan and then you were gone. So like that whole town time when I'll like I'll say it, I'll call myself a townie. Like all of those guys that didn't go off to college and shit like that were going to the the holiday inn. They played at the Holiday Inn mm, a lot. Nothing chilling at the Holiday yeah. Inn. Yeah, they 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 played over there quite a bit. And then they had whenever the leukemia benefit dances were really popular. Yeah, they would play there all the time. And uh, yeah, yeah, they were just great. Two man show, <laughs> a black guy and a good looking white woman, and they jam, man. They yeah. they they played a lot of cover stuff. And I don't know if the, I don't know if they played any of their own stuff. I guess raised the girl, huh? Well, we don't know. I well, yeah, because be. Dave, well, you know, I would only assume would be the gentleman, but uh, 2024. Well, yeah, hashtag it is 2024. 2024. But uh, no, man, I had a blast. Bummer that Mama Smoke got a little of the tummy rumbles and couldn't come. But we we filled their spots and and everything uh, everything went well at our table. Like we had a good time. <coughs> yeah, we did. Um, <clears throat> Janelle and I 
we had about a hundred bucks cash. And uh, she's like, hey, how much uh, cash we got left? I was like, <laughs> 10 bucks. Beers were $4 a pop. I pretty much, so. uh, ladies and gentlemen and folks at home, I know I might have d- dipped my toes in the water last week, but I've uh, <laughs> did, did, did a cannonball. That's I pretty bitch. much fell off the wagon real <laughs> hard. First. Yeah. And I went hard in the paint last weekend at that baseball deal, and I had a blast. And I let well, my you hair were down. Well mannered, yeah, hell yeah. I didn't get out of control. I mean, I probably drink thirty five beers, sixteen, eighteen, twenty six cups. But I mean, I'm fine. I was, I did. I felt great the next day. Woke up. Um, you know, I've been kind of easing back. I've had a fire going at my house for about six days now, like in the fire pit, like through the hell week. Yeah. You know, just sitting out there drinking coffee in the morning. You know, getting her stoked up and stuff. Since the warden's been working a lot, and I don't know, it gets pretty lonely out there on ten twenty five during the I day. I think he's going to start uh, doing a know. neighborhood patrol, like oh, kind of like a neighborhood that. watch. Yeah. Well, I mean, you probably I am, already. Do. I, I do have my return to work date. So. Oh, when is it? April first. Yeah. The citizens of Huntingburg shall feel rest assured that yeah. the streets will be clean. You can go ahead and well fire maintained. up the, uh, the bat light. You can, yeah. You know, click Big Mace. Click her back on. Big I mean. Mace is back on the job. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we. Um, you know, the dining dance was a lot of fun. We, uh, right now ongoing, is a tradition unlike any other. Stealing that from the folks at the Masters. March Madness is Yeah, yeah. So as we air it today, Kentucky just got beat by uh. Oakland <laughs> by about four, uh, which means a lot of brackets busted. BYU screwed my eyes out earlier today. Well, yeah. That's a tough spot. Who, Duquesne? Like, what the? Duquesne. Pittsburgh, yeah. yeah the Dukes. Like, unreal you know i and then uh the uh illinois um shit who did illinois play they were playing somebody and it was know. tight there for a while and i had illinois making it to the sweet 16 so yeah uh, well i love they ended up winning the, a lot of the experts i'll put that in quotes they were talking about mcnee's state being like a possible like underdog they're down 30 sleeper against cell. gonzaga yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i don't know i just <clears throat> i enjoy it uh it's fun you do a bracket you do some different other things that you, hey, can you do. know who i bet's at home watching all this ner- uh ncaa sports who's that aunt perry oh yeah i bet she's just yeah, flat eating it up, up. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah you know did you see she commented yeah. on that reel What'd today she say? <laughs> she's i Opposed to the reel about we were talking about sports, like the choice cut, like you know, yeah. do you like sport or the Dear Dutchman's what it was. Yeah. And uh <clears throat> I commented I posted the reel and I said, Do you like sports? We like sports. What's your thoughts? <laughs> and Aunt Perry commented on there, Nope, not even horse oh, shows, I did Dave. See that. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> Dang it, Aunt like Perry. It. <laughs> Aunt Perry. I tell you what, uh, you rascal. Yeah. Um Yeah, so it's uh I've been fortunate to go out to Vegas a couple of times for March Madness wow. for the program, Phil Colley. Yeah. Uh, and it's a blast. So that has ruined me for some of it. I had a lot of friends today that took off and, you know, they were going to watch the games and, you know, off tomorrow. But uh, when you've been out in Vegas for it and you've got that atmosphere, like it's tough to uh, redo. It's tough to replicate. And, uh, you know, be honest, just a long day. You know, we uh, got started early, not early this morning, but 8.30 ish on the road to indianapolis for you went to indy today yeah oh wow gaming Tough. commission meeting oh. 45 minute meeting back in the car on the way home um so indy is a buzz because they've got uh purdue there playing tomorrow yeah tomorrow. uh grambling state they're staying at the uh uh what hotel was that outside of the hyatt regency they had their buses there um purdue i don't know where they we just we'd seen the buses so that's but uh, yeah, it's uh, all how ready many, to go. How many brackets you got going? Just one. I got just fill that one. Uh, and one of them, one. and the one with the guys that like I'm in the fantasy football league with, I'm back to back champion. I had UK going to the final four. That's a tough spot. In, in one of them today, yeah, that is a really tough spot. And then I had BYU beating Duquesne, and then that's not as big a deal. But here's the thing: some of that stuff though is like Duke or uh, Kentucky getting beat hurts everybody. Oh, I had Colorado. Uh, what was it? Oh, I had uh, St. Pete or somebody or Colorado State. I had them beating uh, Texas. That was that my one. That's a seven seed versus ten seed. So I took the ten seed with Colorado State. Yeah. 
and turns out uh, they got beat by Texas. Yeah, tough spot. So, um, yeah. So I don't know, Dave. Did you fill out any brackets? No. Nah. <laughs> Didn't I? Mean, <laughs> son of a bitch! I could have swore you would have. Yeah. You know, I really would have. <laughs> we uh, we I seen fe- one sitting on the kitchen table today, about a quarter of the way filled up with Evelyn's name on it. Oh, they must have had one started. at school or something. You know? Yeah. It's. Uh, I don't know who the bookie is down there at the Holland Elementary. I don't know what they got. Zoe's pretty good at her numbers. I may have to get her, get <laughs> yeah. her trained in. Get her in the on. game. Get yeah. her in the game. We had a uh, uh, tough spot this week. Uh, first uh, game of the year. Oh boy, yeah. And it was, I witnessed the first it, four innings of that. One. It was a tough one. Hey, but you know they say that. I mean, I think they the buzz was up on the hill. Like chalk this up to the first game jitters, and the squad that you were playing was potentially one of the best squads you were going to see all season. Is uh, what is what they heard. They'll be one of the better ones. I don't want that excuse to permeate. No, uh, because it just. It just it it sets a bad precedence, but we've seen some stuff that you know from the from afar. There's some obvious like, and it's not. I told the guys today. I said, you know, I don't know why, but it's put me in a funk for two days because I, I felt like it was my fault. We weren't prepared. Yeah, and they were like, "Well, coach, that's not it." And I'm like, "Well, I know it's not it." Okay, then I'm, what was it then? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we, I don't know. We just kind of caught their interest, renewed focus. We just doubled down on the work, and yeah, you know, just kind of holding some things accountable. They but, hit the ball. That team hit the ball. They hit the ball well. Well, you got to you got to put it in play. They, that's a group there that you know we ninety five percent of them were products of a travel factory, is what. Is oh what, yeah, is what the buzz was on. If the you're not, yeah, yeah, all, and that's a class that, yeah, you know, they've got one guy that's their main coach, and then they got like five or six, seven dads or other oh, dudes right? just hanging out. That yeah. it's a it's a class they love. I mean, yeah. it's a class that they love. And yeah, I don't know. It's just it was fun. It was great to get back. It was a nice little buzz in the air. But mm-hmm. it's amazing. You can tell, you know, if kids are locked in and ready when they come down the hill. Yeah. And I tell you what really chapped my ass. We had uh, – we fight this Crocs and Hey Dude battle. Is that right? Kids – like we had – so JV guys. Now, Smoke Dragon, he's had a one come through the program. Yeah. And when we – if it's a varsity-only game, which is our eighth graders, seventh grade guys are allowed to come down and get, get some work. Yeah. Get some extra reps. Hey, we're going to be there. You guys – if you don't want to show, not no big deal, but some of these guys come get work. So this was a JV game. The varsity game. <clears throat> Which one? Tonight, or Tuesday night, was a varsity game. Oh, okay. So the seventh grade guys, JV guys, were invited to, hey, come get some extra reps, throw all that other stuff, just kind of a light practice, light duty practice. Get some swings, throw, just get a little bit better. And uh, get the eighth grade guys through the cage and uh, – I was like, hey, let those seventh grade guys know they can get over here and hit so I don't see any of them heading this way. And I'm like, what in the hell is going on? So I walk over. I said, well, why ain't we hitting? And they're like, coach, well, look at what – one of the other coaches goes, well, look at what the hell they're wearing, Crocs and hay dudes. I'm like, guys, what are you doing? Like, we come in to get work. Like, where's your cleats? We don't have them. What do you mean you don't have them? Look, we're at the baseball field. Get extra work in. Like, that was the message that was sent out. Yeah. Oh, we just, I don't know. We just go. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, Why is it that most of them communicate that way these days, too? I have no idea. It, it's, yeah. It's wild. So then today, today I made the edict, and I'm sure it was probably popular amongst parents. I was like, hey, listen, nobody shows up in Crocs and Hey Dudes. You have tennis shoes on as soon as you get out of your parents' vehicle. So does that mean no Crocs? Yeah, that's what that rule – like, none. I don't want to see him. <laughs> I said, what if we were going to run on the road today? Yeah. Run up that hill at Southside, freshly paved, Honeyburg Parks Department. Shout out. Appreciate the work they do. Yeah. You going to run up that hill in your freaking cleats? Well, no, Coach. I'd probably, I'd probably tear him up. I said, so you're going to run it barefoot? Ruin your sock? Well, no. I See, exactly. Yeah. Have your freaking tennis shoes. That's right. We had, we've had some kids ruin some socks at the rack because they'll show up and, hey, dudes, and I'm like, well, you're going to go get your – Tennis shoes, or you're gonna be in your your sock feet or bare feet? There, what do you want? Yeah, I'm sure. That Why goes is that well. a no cleat? I'm um, obviously we're not using steel cleats on turf, like I know that, like baseball wise. But why is that like a no cleat zone for, say, soccer or football or something like when they do work in there? Why you tear the hell out of it? Well, why? I mean, 
you would you wouldn't get the life the out life. of that. So it's a longevity thing. Oh yeah, I mean you could wear you could wear whatever you want. Right. Um, but like when we go to, so this is my apprehension about some of these places they talk about putting turf fields in for baseball. Yeah, the number one problem is. Just like you the, have to have multiple pairs of footwear, yeah, depending on where you're because, going. like, when we go play down at Princeton, they're like, Hey, no spikes on no, you can wear molded cleats, yeah, uh, not the metal spikes that you traditionally see. And they're like, We just so Princeton has we just, a, they have yeah. a turf baseball field, infield, wow, outfield's not, it's just grass. <laughs> so, we played there one day, it had rained. And they were having cistern issues because there's a big cistern b- right behind the infield. They collect the water, they run it down to the ditch, and it was just like a lake right behind first base. <laughs> and so they were like, "Hey, by the way, you remember like no cleats?" I was like, "It freaking rained sixty inches out here. These guys, you got they're wearing you want our outfielders to go. Sluice. They're wearing yeah, they're wearing tennis shoes." And he's like, "Yeah, that's that's the rules." And I was like, "Well, what if how they- many?" Uh- how many torn ACLs do we have to put up with, you know? It's unreal. So, like, a lot, but you watch guys play high school ball or college ball. They play on turf with regular spikes. Yeah. And it's just they can afford to replace it. Now, I, the reality of it is it's Rumor your, has it that our football field's getting a new fa- getting a facelift this spring. It needs to because yeah. that turf is – you only get supposedly – Supposedly, every time 10 my years, kids come home from track practice, yeah. their socks look like Chia Pets. From all them fibers yeah. that are coming out. Well, and I don't think it's the fibers that gets bad. It's the base that they put down with the rubber. It yeah. settles because you can stand on towards the south end zone and you can look. Oh yeah. And you can see where the drainage runs because the water and it's settled and all that other stuff. But yeah. I don't know. It's I'm I'm a purist. I like the grass, Dave. Yeah, if you get people to take care of it well. Wow, that's a big yawn. Yeah. That's right into the microphone. Awful early for that, huh? Jeez Louise. I don't know. Um yeah, what you got going on? What have you had going on this week? We skipped that too. Well, yeah. I mean, other than just like the baseball thing last Saturday, and then uh, some people can't handle God. podcast recording. Eighteen minutes in, and Unreal. he's out. So, the, so, the, so Saturday after the uh, yeah, so we came home with full intentions of having a nice fire in the driveway, and then yeah. and then I seen Casey pull in and. I'm standing in my underwear getting ready to take a piss. And he's like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I'm probably going to go in. I knew it was ball game over. And then uh, he texted me and he said, hey, don't worry about it, pal. I've already got the trousers off and I'm heading to the sack also. And I'm yeah. like, man, we're getting old. It, yeah. It but is. then Monday, uh, this started the week over, man. You know, uh, sitting at home, doing a lot of laundry folding. I folded laundry for like three days, I think. We had quite a bit of a pile going there. So I had to get that caught up. Sock sorting. Did a lot of sock sorting. You know who can help you with all that? Mm-mm. Your children. Well, yeah, but they're so busy with homework and sports 16 days a week that I tell them not to worry about it, you know, so they when they actually do get home and get a break and they get their teeth brushed and their homework done and the floor is swept. Old, and, old daddy daycare You know, over all there. that stuff done, you know, I, I figure I just give them a little break. But uh, I finished a series this week called The Gentleman on Netflix. That was a really good one. Um, British, I think. Um, uh, yeah, well, I mean, they were all British speaking and I actually had to turn the, the subtitles, subtitles on because like they're Liverpoolians, like some of the, the like the, 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 the British, I guess you would call them accents amongst the different, yeah, like, they have different depending on the region they're moly, from, you know, like the bruv. You know, like, oh, what's up, bruv? Like, they that kind of like gangstery slang British speak. Like, you, it's yeah. a tough spot. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. So, it I is. mean, other than that, I was just laundry and hanging out. Softball practice, another one. Max had his first baseball practice. At, we went indoors on Monday because of the weather. It was pretty chilly out Monday. Yeah. Was, or, no, that was Tuesday because we came after that and watched that performance down at Southside. But, um, yeah, just getting to work in. I think they, they, they went outside today, um, first time on the field. So I'm just a fan this year. I'm not helping with baseball, helping over with the softball. So uh been tied up. When were those there. six U's play? What day of the week? I don't know. 
I don't know, man. I I don't know. I figure I'll miss the Facebook message. It's on Team Linked, so that's why. I, and I never did send you that team in. No, you either. did. Yeah, because I couldn't find it. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, everything's going through Team Link now. Um, so yeah, we use it for mom's uh, uh, junior golf tournament. Yeah. So yeah, well, everything's everything's running through that. So, but other than that, no, man. I just been kind of hanging out, chomping at the bit. I can drive now. Hell yeah. Went to the doctor today. He took my stitches out, told me to start training. Not just to the doctor. What do you mean? Our friend, Dr. Travis Hubbard. Yeah, yeah. Doc, yeah, it's OT, OT Rav, Travis. Yeah, he yeah. Uh, he took my stitches out. I think out we've today. got a pretty good pub from that episode. I think a lot of people yeah. enjoyed yeah. it. He said that he's been having quite a good, some good feedback from it, too. Well, hey, come on board. Talking to him. But come on board. I mean, they, oh, yeah. I'm sure they will. Indiana they, foot and ankle. Anytime they want. I mean, I don't, all we have to do is call. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so he he took my stitches out liked the way everything looked got some scabbing which he said is totally normal my foot's still numb but he said that could be a long time before that comes back if it ever does yeah so there's uh, a little bit of hope i guess but like that pain is gone every now and then i get those little tingles you know what i mean but for the most part it's it's pretty good so smoke dragon what about you uh, all three boys are in baseball, so Tuesdays and Thursdays are pretty packed to the gills with yep. uh, with the old uh, Diamond Dave. <laughs> old Diamond Dave, yeah, yeah brother. brother, love it, love Ninja it, love it, love star. it. But uh, <laughs> regular can of backer, <laughs> no says I. <laughs> Uh, not been sleeping much, had a couple like three or four hour <laughs> nights in a row. Not sure what that's all about, so I'm just going to work early. Uh, I love waking up to Dave's text. I know. Like, <laughs> and then there'll be like 30 of them. Yeah. I wake up at like 6 05 and I've been getting text messages since f- f- 3 10. Like, <laughs> morning, guys. Like, what do you mean? I went to bed two hours before that. Jesus Christ, Dave. Testosterone's a hell of a drug. Oh, Adipex, shit. baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but cleaning up shop. Man, it looks absolutely great in here. Like, the first thing I said when I got in here was, holy shit. Even, I mean, I couldn't hear myself think because the radio was going so loud, yeah, which was good. good. It felt great. Get the dust off the seat. Yeah, but, like, it, it, man, I wish you guys, folks at home. They, they, they can see that back there. Yeah. Busy Beaver, uh, old Davey, has been. And it's sell yo shit season. Yeah. Also known as tax time. So yes. I got the boat up in here and running. And Man, I'm so glad that you didn't, like, turbo eat shit. Oh, on that yeah. ring. Yeah, that ring. Have you cut it down? <laughs> I to, can't. I don't know how to do it, but I'll try my I, best. I may have to pull it in the cap cut so you can. <laughs> All I could think is good grief. What if I'd have been going the other way when that happened? Oh, or what shit. if the boat would have like rolled <laughs> back? Did you just I mean, see the boat go water. down the hill? <laughs> yeah. Or like if they would just come plowing back into the shop here. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and I'll just. I can probably just stitch that in the episode, right? Yeah. Um, here. Anyway, um, yeah, nice, <laughs> but yeah, no, T's and P's hardcore for that. Like, yeah, that, that was been, wild. That would have been that that's tough. one of those things I was talking about the other day. Like, my brain thinks that my body can still move, like, I'm 20. Yeah, that's I mean, what I think aging is about. Like, you still think there's yeah. things you can do, and it's yeah. just this, this ties in perfectly. Like, I was telling, I was telling Couch Guy before, when I got here, like, and David, I said, I wish I could play a TikTok like on the TV where like everybody could see it as I was scrolling through, uh, sometime today and it was a video of like it was like the top five best chicken leg knockouts in the <laughs> ufc lately and i was like chicken leg knockouts and it's like where they they get like they get stung right like a good shot to the chin or a spinning head kick or something but they don't go lights out immediately their legs just go stiff like and then they start trying to do everything they can do to get to stay on their feet, yeah, but they can't feel their legs at all. Like they are completely like unattached from their body. <laughs> yeah, and it like just watching them try to stammer ass around the ring and not get annihilated. Most of them just try to shoot a double leg, or they try to do something where they go for the other opponent. Basically, legs. wrap up. And yeah, like try, try to, to get try to do whatever they can do. But my God, is it hilarious? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, 
it's a wild spot. But to be yeah, in. no, yeah, that, that, was a yeah. heck of a step though. Yeah, I mean it is hiking your leg up over yeah. that front gate there. Yeah, yeah. I should have just opened the gate, yeah. especially, <laughs> especially when you matter. got there when you got them Wranglers on, Dave. Oh yeah, and tight fitting jeans. That's right. That, Restricts your ability to move there. You got that bit. ball I had to pouch. down the, the highway to see how many that people wrecked it. watching my fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> and you could tell in the video because there's this moment where you're like, <laughs> and you could see him hop back up. Oh shit! You know, and then just go to taking more photos. You know. Well, any 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 nibbles on it? Yeah, I hate marketplace, and I we've talked about yeah. this before because my experience with selling shit on marketplace, you get a ton of assholes. It's a joke. Well, yeah. I had somebody like an hour. Can we be there tomorrow? And this was on Saturday. I'm like, yeah, sure. I got church, you know, but you know, before or after, we'll come before. We'll leave at eight o'clock uh, central time or seven o'clock central time. I'm sorry, eight o'clock our time. I was like, yeah, that's fine. I got to leave by nine thirty for church, but that should leave you plenty of time to oh, get here well, from yeah. where you're coming from. Yeah, and they never showed up. And then, uh, but I mean, pardon me, they did text, hey, we're not going to make it to leave on time, but we'll be there after church. So I waited and waited and told one other guy, sorry, can't look at it today. Somebody's already coming. And they never showed up. Yeah. It's just that stuff. I Tough yeah. Spot. It is. Hey, speaking of, sh- speaking of church. What's speaking, up? Speaking of church. I, I went to church Sunday. Well, that's good. From my bedroom. Yeah, via the interweb. Yeah. I watched Pastor Dan and the Holland Lutherans. Uh, Entire church service from home on the think, on the internet. Do you? Th- I think Pastor Dan would. It'd be an interesting conversation. Oh yeah, yeah I told him the other. Day. I told him the other day that. I mean, I know we on. don't we don't talk religion, we don't talk politics. We're we not don't gonna, have to do that. We just pe- well, we talk about pastor life. Well, pastor life, how yeah. you got into it? Yeah. Like what? He's a big football guy. I know Dave doesn't like sports, but no, he's a sports guy. I mean, he's a big football. Dave guy. is a sports guy. Hey, but you know what Pastor Dan is. A golfer. He's a golf guy. So we could probably talk golf. Golf right around the corner. Yeah, yeah. I remember. We'll be here before you know it. I don't know. It's been last summer sometime, but I I didn't make church at 10 mm-hmm. on a Sunday and uh, took off work, you know, with a buddy from work to play golf. But by God, he damn if he didn't just walk in as I was tipping back my uh, beverage. <laughs> my dad got bloody married at 8 o'clock on a Monday. But uh, couldn't make it to church uh, at 10 on a Sunday. Uh, I was like, ah, uh, shit. What do you know? That's busted. <laughs> that is a tough spot. But no, uh, yeah. So I, I, I like that. It was kind of neat. Yeah. It felt like I was there, but I wasn't. You know? A lot of them do. Yeah. I thought, well, since COVID. I mean, St. Mary, I mean, yeah. Mary's I mean, We they... watched that a lot. The kids did. The kids watched Mass quite a bit Yeah, COVID and Justine, too. Yeah. Yeah, it is. What about you, man? Other than baseball, I mean, I know we covered that. You think got anything else going on? Well, so Saturday was a big day. Saturday was a real big day. Not only the dine and dance, before the dine and dance. Okay. I had a hell of a Saturday. You did. So, friend of the program, shout out, Jer Bear, Toys Auto Parts. Oh, the best parts yeah. Jer Bear has been, hey, we need to get you out on a ride. And I'm, you know, I'm not licensed. So I go through that, do that. Obviously, I have my motorcycle endorsement. And so he's like, hey, let's ride this weekend. Weather's going to be nice. And uh, I was like, okay. So we, uh, first time kind of out on the open road. On the Grape Ape, and it was fun. Yeah. Um, enjoyed it. It was nice. I see why people love it. We kind of we went out back, um, Stendel Way, mm-hmm. kind of just a nice, not a busy road, just kind of eased on through there. Mm-hmm. Um, then got coming back, took 64 back, kind of opened her up a little bit, and 161 back down. And Oh, yeah. Just had a blast. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it's... Wind the, therapy, man. It was. Yeah. And I tell you what, we had a wind when we turned to start heading southbound on 161. I mean, I felt like a 300-pound parachute. Like, that baby, <laughs> like, just went. And I, and I told him, because I told him, like, I was like, I don't know if I could ride this bike to, like, French Lick, like, during the week. Oh, like as a no. commuter bike. No way. But like it's fun to like tour around here and do yeah. all that other stuff. But I was like, yeah. I got to have something to break that wind a little bit because oh, it just, yeah. you damn near feel like you're coming I off the I rode all the way to uh, Virginia Beach without a, without a, a uh, yeah. I, went, I rode all the way from here to the ocean without a windshield. <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about the Harley getting bad gas mileage. <laughs> yeah. 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 We were stopping about every, every 85 miles. Yeah. Every, yeah. And then, uh, so and that bike, that bike is not an easy ride, easy bike to ride. It is because not. It's very low. It's lowered just a shade. Or, and if it's maybe not, it's lowered. I'm just, a, when I rode it, it was, I, I'm a, I'm a hefty fat bastard, which makes it going to sink a little lower. Well, you're tall too. Yeah. And it doesn't have, 
It does have forward controls, but it, they're not, I don't know. I just felt a little stoved up. Plus those 18 inch ape hangers are kind of tough to get used to, which blows my mind that you even entertain the idea of riding a motorcycle with 18 inch ape hangers without ever really having any riding experience. Well, uh, but he, here's the, here's the crazy, he turning goes, it around and doing that, uh, slow speed intimate shit is where those ape hangers become a little bit of a chore. Well, like you turn in the road. Yeah. Like that's pretty tough. Well, I'll you, tell you how you it get started. pretty stretched out on one of them. Babies. I'll tell you how it started. He goes, Hey, just take it around Coming the, out the garage. He's like, take it around the block. <laughs> he had it sitting up. Out there. Oh, okay. Good. And I don't know if you'd have made it. Cause that was tough for me. It, Trying my legs and my pants are all stoved. Up. Yeah. He said, Hey, take it around the block. Get comfortable with it. It, that first turn hanging left out of the dead stop. I was like, son of a, I was like, there's no way this well, you're is going to work. You're short armed. Like you, yeah. you are, you're short armed. And I'll be honest, like, and I kind of told him this, like, he's like, so like having my hands up like that with it vibrating, <laughs> like finger my fingers were starting, hanging on. My, no, it wasn't that bad, but my fingers, my hands like started to get numb. Whacker. Yeah. It started to get numb a little yes, bit. Sir. And I was like, you know, you'd have, we'd have to almost stop probably every hour and a half. Yeah. Cause it just that way, but it was a blast. It was yeah. fun. Uh, we'll do it again, but it was just, you know, keep marching to the ultimate goal. Avon grips help with that. What's memory, that? Memory foam Avon grips. Yeah. Oh. This is what I got on mine. Cause even when, before I had the tall handlebars, I had the factory ones. Yeah. About an hour in or so. It just, yeah. Well, and, I, those, and I got rubber mounted. Those, uh, twin, motor mounts. those twin, as I say, those twin cam 88s, they, uh, they got a loud. That, that's that's a. Uh, that's what I mean. Like that's an original vibrating motor. There, yeah. yeah. That's the one. The old that, Milwaukee vibrator. That's right. Well, that's and that the, thing, the old lady, and because it's cam, and it's cam. Yeah. And so that was a little bit different because he's like, "Oh, my fuel injecting, you know, yeah, glide back no, here." Just if you hurt. would have jumped on that, if you would have got on that road glide after getting off that gray ape, would have felt like you'd have felt like you were in cloud. a yeah, you'd been on a spaceship. <laughs> well, because friend of the program chops was like, I feel like I'm riding my couch down the yeah the, the highway yes so because they got their fairing bikes and they got all that well you're talking about wind blockage and yeah well like and that's that. what that's what i'm looking at so if somebody wants to donate if uh bud's harley in evansville <laughs> wants to put a slap a sticker on there be more than happy wow. but uh so we did that and then the big news uh as i was getting ready to go on my ride my buddy dave here called hell yeah oh he, yeah i got to said, witness this and yeah. he said hey you still need a beer fridge? I said, well, of course I do, Dave. Well, I might got a lead on one. I go, what, well, what's he want for it? We got a hot ticket item here. He goes, what's he want for it? He goes, he wants it gone. And I said, sold. Oh, wow. He's like, well, can you come get it now? I was like, I'm getting ready to go on a ride, bud. Like, I, like, Some guys fall into shit and come out smelling like a rose mm -hmm. every single time. Just had to be patient. Yeah. So yeah. for yeah. the program, Chad Petrie, yeah. he had one. He's like, hey, just got to get rid of it. And like, I roll up. He's like, thing gets a little too cold for the missus. Kind of freezes a few things up. Probably be perfect for what you're looking for. Nice. I was like, sold. Yeah. And then his beautiful bride was, she was cleaning it. And I was like, it, you're wasting your time. It's going to sit in the garage. She goes, oh, it's so dirty. And I was like, you can stop. Like, yeah. it's, it's okay. Like, don't, don't waste your cleaner. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the beer fridge is in. Uh, my wife was impressed with the sourcing ability of Dave. And I said, you know, just it, pure luck. And then I told Chad, I said, hey, if you guys are getting a, rid of like a washer and dryer starts making a noise, you don't know what it is. Like, <laughs> we may be interested in that, too. So, oh, but yeah, that man. was that was the week. And then we've been into baseball and, um, you know, the kids have been ever growing. It seems like we every time we take them to get a haircut like Ryan and Rhett. You look at him, you're like, God damn, you're she, 15. Justine took Maxwell up to uh, Maxie's to have old Pop Pop do, do him up. He got all that under scruff underneath the perm taken down. Yeah. So he's still got the mop on top, but all that, he's, mm. he's, he's skinned off on the sides. And I, Jesus Christ. I mean, he, yeah, he looked, I mean, he looked like he was 17, you know, when he got yeah. out of the van. And I just thought, good God, kid, you know? Well, and then it makes you realize because Ryan's been complaining about his legs, you know, growing pain. Dad, my legs hurt. I'm like, well, where are they? My feet hurt. Yeah. And I go, well, where at? And he points to shins, yeah. which we got to work on that a little yeah. bit. Like, yeah. we got to start knowing what's what here. Yeah. But he was, he's just been having a go of it growing. And then you look at him and it's like, damn, he's about caught up to Zoe. Zoe's oh, yeah. two years older than him. Max is, 
God, we just did. So we got that. We got the chart yeah. at home. And I can't remember. I think Max is literally a half an inch or an inch from being just as tall as Justine. Like, almost to the T. And then, so... When we went, I took him to, no, what I do? We went to Evansville the other day, my dad and I did, and we got cleats for Max. Yeah. Baseball cleats. And they're size 12s in men's. And he's in fifth grade. You know what we need to start doing with this boy. I know. Footwork. He needs Footwork, it. bios, it stretching, showed, mobility. So, so Uncle Cody, the baseball guy was he took us to practice the other day and stayed because he didn't have nothing else to do. I mean, Jesus, he lives in Arkansas. You know yeah. what I mean? So he stayed and helped out a little bit, you know, whatever, picked up balls in the cage and stuff. And that was the first thing he said when whenever Max went to get in the shower and all that stuff after we got home. And he's like, big fella needs to work on his footwork. But yeah. I felt like during basketball season he did well, like defensive slides and, you know, doing stuff like well, that. You know, but which, he just – he he probably the best thing uh spray some dots in the garage oh yeah and jump I'll, I'll probably call coach wheel call coach wheel up and say hey you got any more dot mats laying around in the weeds somewhere you know uh and we'll just uh we'll just start cranking out dots doing dots yeah you know what dots are nope they look like the number five on a die okay and you go <laughs> two one two 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 kind of like a hopscotchy type deal mm -hmm. and then you go one legged all the way around and it's a whole there's a bunch of stuff it's a whole do. deal yeah but supposed to we did it a lot I, I didn't do it much i kind of like Fake pretended it. like i was jumping yeah, yeah. doing dots and shit but i mean it really didn't matter i mean i wasn't gonna i mean not get real. but for a young guy like him and yeah. the hip mobility is a big yeah. thing too yeah um yeah it's but you know we so baseball and just the kids and Everything going on, and it just uh, freaking I didn't busy. fish much this week either. Oh, man. Because the cold. weather, God, it got cold again. We did. It got real cold again. Like, turn the damn heater on cold again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, We've had our air conditioner on. Yeah, <laughs> right. On. Yeah, we, well, we don't have air conditioning. <laughs> but, I mean, like, if we did, I imagine. Well, that. and the only reason, before somebody goes, oh, Esquire, you don't care about the electric bill. Just pay whatever you want to do. Esquire. <laughs> 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 Uh, it's because of the one-year-old in the house mm. finding the premium sleeping comfort for him oh, allows yeah. for sleeping comfort for yeah. predominantly mom because my CPAP, you know, sometimes must sound like a diesel and I don't hear these kids like, <laughs> oh, crying or, you know, wanting to get up and <laughs> like a Briggs and Stratton. Right <laughs> yeah. Now. Mine's starting to leak around my face a lot. My CPAP. Yeah. I can't like even tighten it up enough to make it go away. I can't figure it is out. Is it leaking up top, or is it actually leaking where the no, air comes no, in? No, no. Like, what do you have? Do you have nose pillows? No, no. He's I've got. Well, it's the, like a mask, but it's got the thing on top for the hose. Here, I, well, I don't have my phone. Oh, maybe I can. But uh, I could find the photo here. But it blows. Yeah, air in my eyes. Well, you don't want dry eyes. Well, that's the problem. Dry maybe that's eyes. why I'm not sleeping good. That or the testosterone and other Adipex, shit. Yeah. Adipex, yeah. That yeah, could I be. Can't, I can't pull them up. Either yeah, way. we look look like fighter pilots, dueling yeah. fighter. So we're mine's laying just, in the bed together in yeah. the to Uncle Todd hotel room trip. Did I, I? I told you guys I talked to Uncle Todd. Yeah, I don't know. We told the fans. Yeah, we may have something going on there here soon. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned it last week. week. Which, by the way, we're getting ever closer to that little Creeping shindig on, on April, whatever that yeah, is. Yeah, we need to uh, tell the folks at home about it big time on this show because if it's, they yeah week after yeah it's the week after that so yeah well i'll just go ahead and do it right now good time for it april 6th gaslight 9 p.m sharp the yours truly wandering dutchman uh friend of the program curtis crow and chicago's own dj ribsky you know, we ought to probably talk to him and see, yeah. bring him out to the lounge. Yeah. Maybe record a little content. Something like that. But yeah, we're doing a comedy show. I'm leaving uh, at five o'clock in the morning. That's for the Sunday Eclipse, before. David won't be. That's okay. We'll just turn the lights on and turn it off when we leave here. Yeah, that's so fine. No that's big fine. deal. But uh, Well, we could uh, do it beforehand. I right. mean, I would assume he's we just could. not going to show yeah. up yeah. and leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you don't have your tickets, uh, go to our Facebook page and click on the Eventbrite link and... 
uh, get your tickets bought because we're only selling 80 seats. There's just a few select. There's a select tickets that will be available at the door that night, but don't count on getting one if you don't get one online because they're, I'm imagining they're going to go pretty quick. So the Gaslight's not a real huge place. So click on there. If you can get your tickets, get them, and we'll hope to see you there. should be a good time. Yeah, we're uh... – you know, kind of branching out, yeah. dipping our toes in that Something, water. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to get up there and carry on for <coughs> two hours and try to be funny. Because like my wife said, she doesn't want to hear me talk any more than I already do. So. And you're not really that funny. No. So then we're just going to. Dave's know. the funny one of the group. Exactly. And he doesn't do it on Holy purpose. shit. There's this. <laughs> look at the, Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> there it is. There's yeah. that beautiful photo there. Oh, That's God. David and I there. So if you could see in that general mask area. He could there. share it on there. I could. Yeah. We'll, we yeah, could, put, just send we, it to me. We there. could just, just drop that him. in there. But, yeah, drop yeah, that's, oh, uh, so that thing's leaking up around the bridge. Your no- Well, because your nose is thinning out. Your uh, nose is that getting, bad. Your nose is like nose. nose. You're getting nose skinny. <clears throat> oh, your nose. You, yeah, you had a fat ass nose before you started <laughs> all this weight loss shit. You fat nosed bastard. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, mine always. If you notice this, uh, that little oxygen mask thing there that mm-hmm. I've got on, mm-hmm. uh, it it kind of gets real dirty in there, and and it it makes some real really weird air noises coming out of like where the whistling oh god bless does it whistle yeah woo woo yeah no whistle not tits. like the whistle tits yeah so i have to uh take that thing off and clean it quite regularly mm-hmm. how many times a year do you replace that thing uh not as many as i should like my headgear is about shot because my when i wake up like the 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 um oh velcro, velcro. the velcro is almost gone mm. I need to get me a new one, but we're kind of broke right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ankle so, surgery. Yeah, I had to do that there, but we'll try to get that. Yeah. The um, I don't know. I Ch- was going to say real quick, uh, and we kind of got off. Topic, oh, I know what I need to do. To the tickets for Gaslight is in the description. There you so go. Yeah, yeah, it's down the, here. Down yeah. there. Down there. Yeah, Isn't that what they do on YouTube? Little, yeah. yeah, the down. The yeah. down there. It's down there. Yeah, just, I know what I was going to do. And then where's the subscribe button? Yeah, uh, it's somewhere. In some bottom right, right screen. Yeah. So we need to point to our bottom left. Yeah. Because mm. it's the opposite. Mm. What were you going to say? Well, <clears throat> so friend of the program, Drew and Matt Mesmer. Okay. Drew is head basketball coach of yeah, the Park Rangers. Yeah, yeah. They took one. Yeah, on the chin. Tough spot. They weren't gonna. They weren't gonna beat Brownstown. Not a chance. Not a chance. No. But meat grinder. You Just know, like he Bossy. walked into a buzz saw. Yeah. Good well, for them though. Yeah. And so <laughs> Drew and Matt, big fans of the show. And uh, I was down at the Holland Lee Jones. Are they brothers or cousins? They're brothers. Got it. Yep. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, but he was giving me some gruff about. You know, here I am, sectional championship winning coach, and can't get some love on the you know the show. Yeah, well, because we don't like. No, heads. stop it. We Sorry. are accepting of all. I guess we do like people from Ferdinand. We have to. Ever since I linked my i to my iCloud or thing, I've taken over this iPad. Okay. Now. So now I'm receiving text messages like through my iPad from yeah. your wife that's sitting in the yeah, room yeah. now. Mama, yeah, Mama Mace is in that. Yeah. In so, the house. In the house. But anyways, shout out to Drew and Matt. Not Mama Mace. That's my mom. That's the warden. Yeah. The warden. What the hell am the I warden. thinking? The warden's in the yeah. house. Hey, Mama. She just sent me a gif of a, a woman deep throating a hot dog. Ah. So. Are you guys? I don't know if that's a woman. Well, that is it not? She's got a. She's oh, got no. A that's a, thing, that's a monk. By the time, they weren't allowed to be priests. That's when a that monk. painting was made. Um, that's a monk man is she trying to say something about i you? would not think so no uh, okay no it's two dudes looking at each other in the eyes while one of them's deep throating a 12 dog. incher that's a tough spot <laughs> hey but you know what we do have we have three big things hey. from our buddy brad hey. over and here. i ran yeah. into him at that place that we're not allowed to talk about tonight and he said that that place that we were in. Uh, well, that thing that up. I didn't want to bring oh, up. Oh, the daddy daughter dance. Thanks, asshole. But uh, he said, I hope you're ready because they're bangers. A ball of snakes. Oh, no. Ugh. 500 pounds of invasive Burmese my, uh, mythons. Go pythons. On. Go on, get. That's what <laughs> How did we forget ex- to talk about St. Patrick's Day? Oh, shit. Shit. Yeah, I didn't do anything. So I didn't either. Yeah. The warden has got that sweet ass sweatshirt. 
Did you see her sweet ass sweatshirt for St. Patty's Day? I did not. I'll try to find a photo of that too. Because hey, what's real quick a favorite St. Patty's Day memory? Uh, when we were recording in the lounge drinking uh, green beer, green beer, and Arlo played that uh, song mashup, like one of our first TikToks, oh, our first reels, yeah. and uh, oh, I we did. Sing. Was <laughs> that did. it? Were we drinking green beer? No, I was no, wearing a green polo. Oh, the yeah. green polo. That was the uh, shaft extension. Oh, that episode when I said I wanted to get my shaft extended, and it was like a mashup. And then we started like violently headbanging, and that that was a good one. <laughs> That's when we had fun doing this. Yeah. Now it's all business. Yeah. I mean, we I love gone, it. We've gone corporate, <laughs> sell out. Well, piece you know of what? Shit. Well, like we did, like this year, we didn't do any like holiday decorations. Well, because like, the, the table's got to be clean because Mister OCD <laughs> likes everything neat now. That's the <laughs> we, can do, of, we can do centerpiece like a a, th- a themed thing. That's just the beer cans and shit. Yeah, we don't yeah. like that. Also, your clutter living is in what he's saying. Living in swaller. Yeah, yeah. not here. Uh, favorite St. Patty's Day memory? Such yours. What about you, Dave? I, I never really did anything for St. Patty's Day till we moved here, and then Ireland, and only did that a couple times. It's too busy yeah. for me. So we had a uh, in college. I think it was our senior year. A uh, good friend of the program who shall remain nameless, um, but he was a friend of uh, Florida man and I. Mm-hmm. Good friend, good buddy uh, in Illinois, and uh, he decided that he wasn't going to go to class. It was St. Patty's Day, and we had our St. Patty Day plans. We were going to pregame with Boondock Saints. Oh yeah, and then we were heading out. Great, movie. like Boondock Sex was going to. Get us there. Boond- What'd you say? Boondock, Boondock Saints. Sex is I gonna thought get he there. said Boondock Sex. Like, That's what? Right. <laughs> Jeez Louise. It's going to get him there. Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> I got, I've had sex with the Boondocks before. I guess. He was, uh, it was one of those like warm spring days. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so we had like a knee high pool kind of deal. He sat in that some bitch and got drunk all day. In a knee high pool? Like 8 a.m., he sat in the water and just got <laughs> drunk. <laughs> And I mean, so like where we were at in the house, like down the pit, so people would be walking by to class, and he motherfucked everybody coming by, coming he, by. Hey, where you going, losers? Screamers. There was a point. There was a point where he challenged uh, three of the men's UE men's basketball team, like to one on one. Like, ah, oh, you guys are a bunch of bitches. So then, by the time the rest <laughs> of us sounds awesome. The, by the time the rest of us got done with our day, where can we go he was somewhere and get real out. wicked drunk and heckle people and like not? have to like we're gonna do that at the bombers games this year yeah we're gonna sit up top sweet <laughs> throw peanuts at people yeah popcorn. so anyways there is saint patty's day glad we could talk about it but hey back on, to get. three big things from our buddy brad ohanian a ball of snakes 500 pounds of invasive burmese pythons that's what well, wildlife how many experts was it, like two <laughs> in southwest florida say they recently captured after discovering discovering a large ball of Mating snakes. Oh, include the old snake orgy. The including old mating ball. one more, including one more than sixteen feet long and in one Collier poodle. County, Florida. And one poodle. Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. I think you guys have touched on this before, but do you have a creature, spiders, for example, that you just won't mess with? I don't like spiders myself, but uh, snakes don't bother me. Now, Meat Man, on the other hand. I meat, don't do snakes. Meat Man is terrified. Meat Man's Jeep sat in his parents' driveway for like a long time because there was a snake that may or may not have been planted in there. But we were just talking about snakes at work this week and they defy too many laws of physics and everybody just seems to be okay with it. Like well, they're serpents. No they lay on their belly. They're the devil. They're all up the right. wall. They're the devil. That's damn right. There. Well I yeah, <laughs> damn right. The uh the drone. the invasive species nature of these uh, Burmese pythons is amazing. Yeah, they're hunting because seasons down there now. They are legit. They, at one point, and they've started to battle back, but, like, I think they were responsible for 90% of the mammal disappearance in the Everglades mm-hmm. and areas like that. Um, so, like, these... Iguanas are getting real bad down yeah, there, Yeah, you too. can hunt them some bitches, too. I don't too. like lizards, either. Nah, what about Rango? I don't like them. He can't use his front legs. He, we got problems with Rango. Does your wife deal with uh, lizards and such? Uh, you have to call her. Yeah. I don't know. To, no, we're not making an appointment for that. But. You're going to get him a little <laughs> set of wheels? For his- <laughs> like a reverse scooter. You know what I mean? For the front. Like one of those three wheels. Well, he'd have to have some sort of steering wheel or he'd just be He's head- got shoulders. Well, I guess you're right. That's true. 
So anyway, like the, if you watch, so now they don't, they do have a hunting season for them and those guys clean them out. Mm-hmm. But what they've started to do is track the females to lead them to the eggs mm-hmm. because these things, they'll have like 20, 25 eggs. Yikes. So that's what they're producing out. So they, they track. Ought, they, they ought to feed them chicken eggs full of tannerite and then wait for the f- ball and then just blow them all up. All of them. Wow. Oh boy, because they eat those eggs whole, right? You damn right. Have you? Did you I ever, send? How you, are they going to hold a fork? Did I? I mean, they sure as shit ain't going to rip it apart. Oh my god! <laughs> Have you seen the video? Did I send you guys the TikTok of the guys that did the five gallon? Bucket? I don't know. You send out so much shit since you've been home. You five need to go back gallon to work. bucket of tannerite in this beaver dam and put a two liter Coke bottle full of gasoline on top of it. Oh boy! And they were only like a hundred yards away from the son of a bitch, no. and there was chunks of earth, like the size of the bucket, flying by them, like at mock Jesus, like they could have been killed. When my buddy uh, died, uh, the fat man up there, yeah, uh, R.I.P. T's and, T's and P's. We uh, mixed him up in three or f- a three gallon bucket of tannerite, his ashes, all and of them. A- uh, yeah, all of them, and then uh, th- uh, and then we did like a seven gun salute of most of the gaunts. We set them down in the creek bed at the farm and like f- firing squatted it. But we thought we were gonna blow the windows out of the house there at his mom's, but it was wild. It's a big one. That's <laughs> unbelievable. He wanted shot out of a hey, cannon. Hey, my mom said something this week where she was thinking about maybe cannon. cream. You know, like we were talking about that kind of thing. Like we're just, you know, conversation wise. You know. Yeah. Hey, hey, mom, what do you want us to do with you when no, you no, die? No, no. She, she, that- well, she was bringing. You know, she was talking about it. You know, like cremated because somebody that she knew or somehow she had a connection with somebody that had been. You know, they had done it to a family mm-hmm. member or whatever. And she's like, I've been maybe thinking about that. So maybe I'll have to ask my mom if she wants us to. Uh, my mom. She. But she said something a- about taking her to the mountains. So maybe we could like get some tan. Well, then we would start another forest fire in yeah. Gallenberg. That'd be a tough spot. Yeah, but then your mom's name could live on forever. That <laughs> forever. Way. Holy shit! Uh, largest property damage ever was occurred when uh, Linda Masoner's ashes were blowing up in Tannerite, <laughs> caused a large fire and burnt down all of Gatlinburg. She told me if there was any flowers at her funeral, she would haunt me till I die. So I don't could only imagine what would I'm happen. I'm gonna bring we, a shit ton of flowers. I don't know what would happen if we burnt Linda down the Masoner down in your Gatlinburg. Ass. God bless it. <laughs> TikTok ban, a bail that would that was supposed ban to happen Tuesday. TikTok in the uh, U.S. Uh, now uh, leads to the a Senate bill floor that would ban as well. After the House voted on Wednesday with overwhelming bipartisan support mm-hmm. to remove the social media platform from U.S. app stores, yep. lawmakers supportive of the bill have argued TikTok poses a national security threat and should be spun off from its Chinese parent company, ByteDance, because the Chinese government could force the company to hand over the data. Of U.S. app users, it's probably that. Uh, I know, I know. We yeah. don't dive into political topics, but since you guys are active on TikTok, what was your wandering thoughts? Probably because of that Singaporean guy that's from Singapore that has nothing to do with the Chinese government. That's from Singapore that started it. It's probably because he's from Singapore. Have you seen all those TikToks? No, I can't say that. What I have. the hell was it? Me and my you wife. need to go back to work. No, me and my wife laughed about this a hundred times because they had him in front of a Senate meeting. Was it a Senate meeting or a House of Representatives or something? And there was this uh, a United States congressman or government member was asking this dude, like, where are you from? He's like, I'm from Singapore. And he's like, have you ever been part of the Chinese Communist government? No, I'm from Singapore. <laughs> I was in the Singaporean army for two years do you have dual citizenship no i'm from singapore <laughs> like he said it 40 times yeah i've not seen it I, good. you know what if you really think the chinese like tiktok is just the cherry on top like if they really think that this is the chinese aren't into other I things to have probably more worried that they're getting all the data it's not that but i think that since uh putin and china aren't they haven't they been budding up a little bit it's They've probably been that snuggling. shared thing them siberian the, i know the chili interference the, with elections i know the tinfoil hatters would months. probably eat me alive for asking this question but like what kind of information would they have access well, it's to the geo TikTok? it's the geo tracking of it all mm-hmm. so the i mean it 
Like Facebook, when you talk about boobs, you get bra ads that show up. Mm-hmm. Like when you talk about boobs and, and and you pull TikTok up, it's still your same no, it's f-ing cancer talk. Yeah. <laughs> Um, or Native Americans, or or, who, or whatever you come. But up you with. have no problem with Native Americans. No, I love okay. those people. Yeah. Those are great folks, and the Native drum circles and whatnots. But this late latest trend is the goddamn uh, the dog dying thing. Oh. Did you see my fish? Did you see my fish TikTok? No. Okay, so there's this song that you need to go back to work. This sent this uh, song that's trending <laughs> now. It's like, and I will now that you're gone. Like it, it, it's a real tear. I did well. I did see one. It's a tear jerker. Two things, real quick. Every one of them TikTok have over related. a million views. Two things, TikTok related. I saw one that really struck a chord because this this lady was like, "Don't let your dog cross over the rain, uh, rainbow without at least having trying chocolate." Chocolate. That's the one. And that's one like, of them. I was like, first off, that's bad to give your dog. Like every veterinarian knows that. But then I was like, oh, because he's dying. Yeah, like they're taking him to have him put to sleep. Yeah, and it's tough like, spot. Second that thing, song. That what song. What if he hated chocolate and died in the in the car with that terrible taste in his mouth? What if he just didn't like chocolate? That's well, a tough spot. Tough spot too. Second thing, bro, just telling more about herself than her. Which dog. this is wild, <laughs> but the match day unveilings for the med students was hot on the talk this week. I didn't catch that one. I caught it, and the bad thing of it is, is I started to discover the underbelly of the people that don't match with these other things. And you're like, you spend your whole life to this point to like match somewhere. So I think, and the warden's here. She could probably explain a little bit better. But basically, you get done with your residency stuff. And then you go to match basically your first job, right? Or no, you're matching for your residency. So you're done with your four-year part. You're getting ready to do the three to seven-year part. And that word yeah, said he, he, he ended, ended up pretty in deep Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so... This, so, like, some of these people, like, if you don't match with your top choice, let's say you want to do peds, they may send you and say, hey, you matched with this OBGYN thing. And then that's kind of where your residency takes you, and that's what you train off to. But I found a few that, like, 2023 match day didn't have anything, like, sad face. And then, like, here's for not giving up on your dreams. 2024, match to do this other stuff. Mm. And because this one lady that had it, she's going to, like – the University of California, San Francisco to do peds. And I was like, there's no way in hell you'd pay me to go to San Fran to do peds. No, but there's lots of staph infections with the poo all over. Probably. It's a, it's a, it's a pandemic. It's an epidemic. Mm -hmm. It's an endemic, whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Uh, last one from our buddy, um, princess of Wales. And I don't understand what's going on with this. Uh, there's lots of rumors. She died. (laughs) She's not dead. Princess of Wales spotted amid royal family rumors. The public absence of Catherine, Princess of Wales, is brewing controversy and confusion. See how the royals are navigating the rumor mill. I admit, I had to Google what was going on. She hadn't been seen since, like, December. She had a stomach bug and I think some surgery that they didn't tell the world about or something. So it's not that the other dude was... Porking some other woman, you think that's what was going on, and she's hiding from the shame. Oh, see, like there's a bunch of these rumors He's out pouring the royal pud, and she ain't having it. Yeah, well, because she had because they posted a picture that was like clearly Sounds like a mess, isn't it? It was <laughs> isn't it? It, isn't it? Isn't it? Because they posted a picture for Mother's you, Day. You over know there. what I'm talking about, bruv. And it was. But I'm telling you, see, bruv, I, I'm in, and I, I know exactly what you're saying. But she. They posted a picture of her and the kids, and it's you can see where it was photoshopped, oh, and that continued to in. speculate the rumors there. So I don't know. Anything now they're about saying it. that the UK privacy watchdog probes claims where Princess Kate's hospital notes were breached. Oh, so I guess they're they're probably trying to like leak it to the public to let people know what. Well, because then I saw something where she was hitting a volleyball, and they're like, "See, her tummy hasn't been tucked," and it was like. <laughs> Like showed a little ah, bit of midriff, ah, like when you raise your shirt up, like when you raise your hands. Yeah, and that like, happens to me I all the time. Know. My tummy has not been tucked. <laughs> Depends on the little... pants I'm wearing. Uh, oh God! <laughs> hey, let's get into speaking the pause. Of, speaking of pants, I gotta go pee. <laughs> In them or what? Yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> hey, wonders. get ready to laugh until your sides hurt at the Gaslight Pizza and Grill on Historic Fourth Street in Huntingburg. Join us on April the 6th for a night of hilarious comedy featuring the one and only Curtis Crow, yours truly, the Wandering Dutchman, 
and the headliner, all the way from Chicago, Mr. DJ Ribsky. Grab all your friends and come out for a night of delicious food, great drinks, and nonstop laughter. Don't miss out on this one-of-a-kind evening of entertainment. Get your tickets now before they sell out, and we hope to see you there. Back. Hey. I can't even do it. I can't even do it. Those guys, when they... Uh, <laughs> Like they do that real high pitched scream. Is that what it when sounds I sing, like? When I sing Toby Keith, that's how I hit those vibrato notes he does. Like the. <laughs> did, Dave. Did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just did. wiggle my golly womper and that that's gets her to go and have it. No, but that uh, Native American drum music, man. I'm, I, I don't, you know, you talk about like jets and things getting you fired up and shit, but that stuff gets me flat fired up too. Like a, jets? Yeah, like patriotic shit, like jets flying over and. All that stuff, you know, like, yeah. man, that's awesome. You that know is. what I mean? Yeah. But like right. Native American music sometimes, like that, <laughs> man, that gets me right in the feels. Well, I thought I was an Indian because my grandma told me I was. Yeah. Until my sister got a damn uh, 23, 23 and me. me. Yes. Turns, <laughs> turns the <laughs> yeah. out. I'm to find out you're just <laughs> wider than the damn North Pole. <laughs> but uh, somebody at work was like, hey, us gingers got to stick together the other day. Yeah. Right? Am I a redhead? Yeah, yes, your beard dude. is red as hell. I know my beard, but that doesn't matter. I tell this kid ginger. that I work with that he is redheaded. He's like, no way, dude. I just got a red beard. And I'm like, what color are your pubes? Because that come that, that'll that tell you what you are. If your pubes are red. He shaves, so he don't even know. Well, then I'm black haired. Yeah. So if your pubes are black, <laughs> you're not a ginger. Okay. Right, so the uh, curtains you don't. Got, you got a red, blonde hair, red the curtains, beard. And the curtain, I'm like Neapolitan ice cream in this <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah, the curtains do not match the drapes. Let's and just the say drapes that. don't match the carpet, huh? Yeah, right. I that's don't know what, what I, the hell's going on. I know. On. That's what uh, I mean. Like, shoot, hey, like a calico. Yeah. Hey, hey, before we get off the rails, <laughs> like a calico cat. Let's go ahead and introduce our hour two sponsor, our brother Matt Creek. Rigo. Hour 2 is presented by Matt Krieg of Krieg Insurance. Our friend Matt Krieg has a passion for helping others and a keen ear for listening to your needs. Matt goes above and beyond to ensure you and your family are protected. Whether it's life insurance, health insurance, or Medicare supplements, Matt Krieg is dedicated to finding the best solutions tailored just for you. His commitment to excellence and personalized service sets him apart in the industry. Don't settle for just any insurance agent. Choose one who embodies the traits of success and truly cares about your well-being. Give Matt a call today and experience the difference firsthand. Hey, big thank you, Krieg Insurance. We appreciate it. That's a good one there. Matt Krieg's one hell of a hell of a mall American. All right, big fella. What you been wondering about? Well, I was having a conversation wah, 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 on the wah. phone the other day with one of my best buds, big friend of the show. And uh bald head, not gonna tell you who it is, but uh bigger guy, lost a lot of weight. But um married, two yeah, daughters, yeah. drives a four pickup truck, yep, coaches six U softball. softball. He yep. still got a, a Dodge Dakota? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. He told me that. He I was telling him that I couldn't drive <clears throat> because I had my foot in a boot. Yeah. And I would be compromising my care if I got behind the vehicle. The wheel of a vehicle. But I was thinking it was probably because I can't use my right foot to drive. So mm -hmm. instead of using your left foot, he just told me I can't drive at all because I can't get my right foot out of the way because of the console and all that shit mm -hmm. going on. And, yep. and and this friend of the show was like, why don't you come over and get the bomber truck? It's got a bench seat and a wide open floorboard. And I thought, oh, what? God dang, I could have been driving the whole time. But I don't think it was a. I think it was just more of like a speed and a action. reaction. Time. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, that's uh, that's a tough. Spot. But anyway, I was asking him <clears throat> if he had been to this restaurant, mm -hmm. and he was like, "No, I haven't been. Haven't tried it." Or yeah, yeah, he said, "No, I have. I have been there one time." And I was saying, "Man, I'd love it. Like, I we love going there. Like, it's really good." And he was like, "Yeah, yeah." Eh. Not bad. Yeah. I mean, you know, pretty good. Yeah. And I was like, really? And he was like, well, so when it first opened, 
like 30 people were talking about how awesome it was and it's the best shit they've ever ate and oh my god i can't wait to go again and 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 then like you you get yourself so jacked up and you're like god this is going to be killer when you finally get a chance to go and then when you do go it was like like an off night for the wait staff or <clears throat> the chef took one too many hits off the old Duber before he come in out of the parking lot or, or you know what I mean? Like something happened and it was just like middle of the road. And then you're just completely like, well, f like these people are idiots. You know, like this was not, uh, but how many times do you, ha how many times do you think that you have to go to a place before you could provide an official, like, this is what it is. Well, in this particular situation, it was just one. It was just a one and done type thing for, for this individual. Like, he, he had made, enough experience. That's what I'm saying. Like, he made the, uh, he made his decision, you know, right away. Now, would he say he'll never go back? No, he didn't say that, but he just said it's just another brick in the wall. Yeah, just another well, but I uh, think, notch on the old belt there. I think that's the tough thing about reviewing restaurants bars things like that like you go one like there can be one person that just absolutely makes it the worst and yes. so then that's your mindset about yeah. everything so the warden is real big on like amazon reviews like when we buy products all those russian bots that just <laughs> post fake answers well you got to look at the pictures now if you guys get the opportunity and you, you got some spare time Look at the reviews on yeah, let the me find some there, Dave. concrete vibrator. It's uh, to mix concrete with. You find that SOB and buckle in. We call it a donkey dick mm -hmm. at work, mm -hmm. the concrete vibrator. Yeah. It's like a big log. Should you share that out? Why? I don't know. I mean, maybe that could offend somebody. A donkey dick at the city of Huntingburg. <laughs> no, not that. No, not that's just what it's they're not a called. Real donkey dick. <laughs> like no, no, not 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 just us. Like no, don't like, backpedal now here, big I'm fella. not catfishing or it's... crawfishing or whatever the f fish I'm talking about. <laughs> everybody in the concrete world calls a vibrator. Yeah, but not everybody represents the city of Huntingburg. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that's what if you say, hey, go get the donkey dick. <laughs> I guarantee you 95%. Cesar grabs your leg? No. God, no. He knows that and all. Paquito. Paquito Pito. <laughs> you know. But uh, no. Uh, I guess like what I'm saying is like the reviews on things. Like I don't, I, how do you know? Would you tr Do you trust reviews on the internet? My warden uh, is all in on reviews. If oh, I yeah. say, hey, we should get this. She's like, hmm. Three stars reviews are pretty bad. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. And I'm saying. like, man, I bet I'm glad I didn't have reviews. I need to read people yeah. we started courting. <laughs> what do you hey, that, and that brings up an interesting question. What do you think your uh review would be? Oh shit. Out of five two stars. And a half? <laughs> yeah, strong two and a half. Fun uh, at first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh shit. I don't even know if I'd make a half a star. I'd be a one star for sure. See, but I think you have a niche market of people that would like you. Chubby people with they're out there. Big feet. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't. Well, like what about what about like so what about like Yelp and and those kind of things? Like Google reviews on other places and shit like that. So like, I you, do you put a lot of stock and stuff like that? So when we uh travel and we want to eat at local places mm. We trust those a little bit more. She does that too, and I'll, I'll get on that train. But because, I'll kind of yeah. I'll throw out the top review and I throw out the worst review, and then find myself somewhere there in the middle in this process. And if you can go to sites where there's multiple places to review, so you look on Facebook, you look on TripAdvisor, you look on Yelp, you can kind of get a feel across all platforms. That's what I, how I look at it a little bit. But I'm also too of the opinion, might as well try your own adventure, like. Because, like you said, it could have been the mood lighting was bad, and that ruined somebody's experience. Like you like, can tell a lot about a place like that by the type of vehicles that are parked out there. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Local. Have you guys a lot ever of local heard? Vehicles is probably a good sign. Yeah. Have you guys ever heard of the news network called Vice News? I don't think it's a news network. Is it not? I think it's no, just a social, yeah, like it's, it's a media company. I think it's sort of a trashy Aren't they going version broke? of uh, TMZ. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, because that one article about um, 
Anyway, wasn't that person a Vice News article that you that when we talked about California banning uh, oh, two freezing bodies? Oh, that's right. That was a Vice News article. So there's a dude. Now I'm going to butcher his name, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's Taj T A J I Taji Taj. Well, I don't know how to say it. And his la- last name is Amin, A-M-E-E-N. Really irrelevant to the situation we got going he on. He has right a show called One Star Reviews on Vice, like on their network. And it's about, like, he goes to all these one-star places. That and sounds actually, like it would be more of, like, a YouTube show than it would something on Vice. You could make more money that way. Well, I mean, he, I, like... I don't know. Because Vice is going broke, allegedly. Probably for paying for stuff like that. Yeah. But this dude goes to all these one like he went to a tattoo place that was only that that like was a one star tattoo joint. Got hepatitis and but showed the chick with this, green teeth was pretty hot if you didn't look at her head. And showed this dude a photo of like a surfing scene that he wanted. And this dude nailed it. Like it was an awesome tattoo. Like it was a really good one. But the guys he, everybody's like, Yeah, this guy's a total dick. Like he's an asshole. He canceled because his kid got sick or some stupid excuse like that like they just roasted this dude well, on, the, on the reviews here's the thing but turns neither, out he was a great like he was a pretty good artist neither like, one of you and don't take this personally but neither one of you have provided a prof- per, a professional experience or a, a service in which somebody reviews you for what you've done as the guy that's represented individuals that have left oh, reviews yeah, online yeah, yeah. I can tell you that they're full of shit. Right. Because they only tell these, especially the ones that are the angry ones. Yeah. That make no sense and they're the rantings of a crazed person. Right. That you don't, I mean, it's just, they're full of shit. And you, like, you don't, some people respond. I never responded. Like, I'd laugh about it. I, and I only had one or two. And, like, both of them, the cases worked out very well. And one of them, he got what, you know, he deserved because he didn't take my advice and he wanted to do something else and yeah. got it hung in his ass. That's his problem. But oh boy, yeah. So I don't know. I just reviews in general, they are what they are. I like them. I mean, I do like them, but then I don't, you know, like I, I do, if you're traveling, like you say, with like the food reviews and stuff like that, you know, on the Googler or the Apple, you know, like, Hey, this place has got four stars and it looks like, you know, when, when she was going to school at, uh, she had to do the in-person portion at the Chicago trip when I went to Rib- Wrigley and all that. That yeah. time, her and I just went up there and we were in, we were not in the city. We were outside of the city and we were looking something up one night and it was like really good reviews and they said you know this and that and we screw it, let's go and it was it was really cool. Like it was a pretty neat dining experience. <laughs> and had we not read the reviews, we probably wouldn't have went, but. I don't know. I was just thinking. I got a buddy that, that posts uh, reposts v- reviews of strip clubs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Those I think you talked reads. about that. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, well, because we discussed who leaves reviews for strip eye. clubs. Yeah, it was a good <laughs> time. I came home with pink eye. Uh, but no, <laughs> where like, do you think pink eye comes from? Fart like bacteria. Part, bacteria in your poop, shit, right? Poop yeah. particles. Mm-hmm. My wife thinks that I'm full of shit, and I've been telling her this, and I guess it's. Something different, but I've always been told it's no. like you want to get somebody good, you fart on their pillow and well, but I think it, guy. but I think it's a bacteria. It could be anywhere. It's from getting shit particles on your hands, not cl- not cleaning your hands, and then you know not being sanitary, and then rubbing shit in your eye and mm. getting a bacterial infection in your eye. I was uh, some TikTok came on. I've been on like women's prison TikTok. Oh and, uh, yes, gal talking about oh. All the- Baby boy, how's the guy sign up to be a <laughs> guard in one of them? My luck is I'd get stuck with some big bull dyke name, you know. Big <laughs> I don't bitch. think you can say that in 2024. You can say it, okay? Can't you? Uh, I mean, you did. Yeah, uh, it's out there. <laughs> um, but like this one gal, my dear friend Andy, <laughs> she was like, "Oh yeah, I got a blue M M&M, and M, and she licks it for her eye makeup, and then like she's got a fireball candy for her lipstick." And then she took toothpaste and like pencil lead and she for eyeliner. eyeliner, but she was using her toothbrush. And I thought of the Mythbusters where all the poo particles get on the toothbrush. I'm like, man, I bet she's fighting pink eye like a bitch between <laughs> spitting on that candy she's sticking in her eye and using her poo covered toothbrush. Hey, for eyeliner. have you seen Dusty Slay's stand up special on Netflix when he mm. talks about love? He's a big, he loves to dip. 
Real oh, yeah, big chewer, yeah. and then he said that he doesn't wash his hands. Like he said, that's an, an embarrassing fact about him. He just he just doesn't like washing his hands, and he said that uh, he was working at the Western Sizzler, you know, and the the guy always his <laughs> the boss Western o- Sizzler, the guy his boss always thought he was wicked high when he came to work, but he said no, nah, I just uh, put my contacts in after putting a chew in. I got a bunch of dip in my eye, just burning the <laughs> hell. Out. He said the buzz is good, but it. <laughs> It ain't for everybody because it's painful. I mean, it's it's it hurts pretty yeah, bad. That's, Man, that'd be awful right. to get eye cancer like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. That's a good Jeez point. Louise, eye cancer. Ugh, that tough would spot. be tough. I don't know. I was just talking about the old uh, the old review game. Just have you ever had that happen to you though? Like where somebody's really churching up this spot? Like if it's a place that you'd ever you've never been. It doesn't have to be necessarily a restaurant, but so, like if somebody ever said, "Hey, man, you got to go here, do this." Yeah, St. George Island. Don't go. Yeah, total shithole. Uh, but anyway, in college. I was always told that there was a there's a gentleman's club in Wheatland. Oh, and I heard they that had lady, one legged yeah. stripper. And we were all excited to Tease go and see the one legged stripper. And uh, they said they never even had a one legged stripper. Like they've never ever. They said they had a midget stripper once. And then there was a stripper. What a oh, rookie mistake. Broke put her your phone on silent. I turned it down, David. So I just turned the volume button down a hundred times. Well, so I gotta, did. You got to still made it. noise. Okay. But anyway, no, no, no legless. Stripper. You know why they start those legends? So to get people to go. Yeah, exactly. My wife has blown me up. She says Haribo sugar free gummy bear reviews. What are they? Are they supposed to be hilarious or something? Oh, she says, yes, it's funny. She said another thing that we kind of got, which I wouldn't say hoodwinked, but she says couples swept away in the grill. That's where we went on our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. It wasn't what we thought it was going to be. Every, oh, I thought you meant swept away like they were missing. No, sir. No, sir. Like no, sir. No, undertow. No, the, that was the, like, the couples is the, mm. like, that's the sandals, <laughs> the couples, like, that's their deal. Yeah. The resort was called Swept Away. Mm-hmm. And it was like, they turned your air conditioner off every day. There was only one buffet to eat at. <laughs> like, little ticky-tack things that we didn't really like, you know? The beaches was, the beach was beautiful, but, like, the amenities inside the the resort were not what we were because when couch guy couch guy got married in a resort at a resort in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. And we had the warden and I had actually been there privy to their wedding. And then when we found out we were going back, we were like, yeah, like that place is badass. that, that resort. So we always say if we could take that resort from Playa del Carmen and just move it to Negril on that beach, you would have something because I mean, you know, that's kind of like one of those review things where we we didn't really get burnt, but we were just, you know, Bucky's. Oh, I am not a fan. It's not even worth its hype. <laughs> well, the shitters are nice, though. You said, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's got a nice shitter, but I didn't have to shit when I was there. I mean, oh, I, I opened did. the door to look in. I purposely make out. myself try to shit every time mm-hmm. I go there. See, but Dave's brand of OCD just doesn't. <laughs> Well, I'm surprised. No, did you shit of... the whole time we were at that place down there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was. I've gotten better about that in the last couple of years. With yeah. age, the the poo fear is going. Away. I don't even make an ass gasket anymore. Well, good for just, you. Just dig on cheeks to plastic. I don't see how and... people waste their time with that. Just God. hop on it. Yes, God. I used to be an ass gasket at least two layers. Like oh, two layers. <laughs> You imagine all that shit sticking to your ass when you stand up. You know when you just always poo water. Out like the you know you don't want to like the head of your pecker rubbing across the front of the porcelain or something. You know because it's got to split in there. Well, my pecker don't stick out that far, Dave. <laughs> I guess I don't ever have to worry about that problem. <laughs> Jeez, normally I just drape mine off the front of the bowl there and hope it don't drag the floor. <laughs> Good freaking god! You don't want the head of your pecker rubbing on the bowl. Well. F- you long dong silvers. I don't have that problem. What was your name? Christ in Almighty. What was long your name? Long, <laughs> long stroke smoke. No, but oh. it went. Big Dick Daddy. Big Dick Daddy. <laughs> I don't know, Mom, if we can come over or not. Let me check with Big Dick Daddy first. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. God, that was a great one there. Your ward does not look amused with the review. <laughs> that, the one that one will live. That one 
gonna live forever. Uh, I cannot uh, believe that's hilarious. Bro. What a problem, huh? Oh man, oh man. <laughs> Shoot. But uh anyway, yeah. Um Google reviews, what a wild deal there. Yeah. So what uh, do you got, big guy? Well big guy. It is uh as we air this, it'll come out on the 29th. And it was just a grim reality that the first quarter of 2024 is gone. Over. And if you're keeping score at home, a quarter is 25%. Mm-hmm. So we've got a quarter of 2024 gone forever. Yeah. Never coming back. So I thought, you know, maybe this year, new me, new you, new you, new, new year, new me. Review. How was the first quarter? What do we got planned for the second, third, and fourth quarter? 506 is a quarter of 2024, right? Of what? <laughs> Sorry. A quarter of what 2024 is 506. Oh, like the number. <laughs> Jesus. Easy rain, man. God almighty. I think he was actually talking about like the days. So like like 25% of 365 is yeah. kind of what he was taking. And I think that shook out to be just, uh, what, January, February, March. That was just shy of uh, uh, 30, uh, 60, uh, 90. So, yeah, so it was like 91 days, right? 92 yeah, 29 days. in February, 30 in March, 31 in January. What are you laughing at? Oh, I'm just tickled. Yeah, I'd <laughs> imagine you are there, giggle butt. But no, I, I don't know. Uh, so my first quarter sucked dicks because I had to get this thing cut out of my leg. But I'm glad it's gone because my the pain that I was enduring, you know, privy to my surgery. That's twice I've used privy. Yeah. I'm liking you, this. You got a word of the day calendar? Or something? I don't know. It could have been. But uh, we should do a Dutchman like desk calendar. Yeah. <laughs> like where we take like actual photos? Uh, not photos, just good things. I mean, we got to have 365 of them. But. No. Oh, I thought we just do a regular 12-month 12 12. calendar. We just have to do 12. Okay. That reminded well, no, couch guy to get up and do his yes, job. Yeah, We yes. should do uh, like the firemen and the police officers, those risque. And we, I guarantee we could give old uh, Trailer Trash Tammy a run for her money. Oh, yeah. I bet we could. I think we'd have to show our... We'd probably have to show a little skin, though, because I think she does in her camera shoots, or calendar shoots. I mean, like, I can't get too skimpy and not have some scrote showing. I know. That's what I mean, but that's fine. Yeah, but Dave would have to wear pants because he wouldn't want to see them bitch shins. Yeah. yeah. Some people like that, though. I can stand in the water or something. <laughs> in one of them knee pools. We'll call up Casey's college friend, see if he's got one of them knee Go pools. Go down there and stand in the creek. With yeah. yeah. Taint hovering above <laughs> Crystal clear water. Is Dave shitting in that creek? <laughs> no, uh, no, no. He just taking a photo for the calendar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it really looks like he's shitting in the creek. Uh, so first quarter for me, uh, basketball season went well for yeah. for both of them, for the boys and the girls. Um, Eleanor didn't really do any kind of sports until softball started. Um, yeah, dealing with my foot was a kick in the ass. That's kind of your highlight of yeah. the first quarter. Yeah, for me. Yeah, you know. Dave, anything for you? No, it's just been, I mean, everybody's good. There's nothing crazy, but we had vehicle problems. That was expensive. Yeah. We had uh, the basal cell carcinoma problems. That was expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the weather sucked. We never really had any snow, and then it just got colder than hell after it had been warm. Yeah. So uh, it won't be hard to beat. You know, uh, yeah, right. High hopes for quarter two. Yeah, quarter one over here was rough too. Yeah, I mean Janelle's dad that took you know I well, was that was a kick in the side. That was a lot in January, and then just the kids, the kind of our first experience as parents of the sickness. Oh of yeah, ever you know almost three two or them. three weeks. Yeah, three of them. Yeah, yeah I went so like that I said three of them. <laughs> You're talking about the space between, like that. yeah, that's what read between the lines. The space between, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. But no, I was just kind of thinking about it because I jokingly always tell Janelle like it'll be March third. I'm like, damn, months over. And then she's like, don't say that. It's not. It's only the third. And I'm like, next time you look up at the calendar, it's the twenty fourth. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, hey, months gone. So yeah. Uh, why <clears throat> did you ever get quarterly bonuses? Mm -mm. We get we so, used to get quarterly bonuses. Not the city, at the previous job. We I get had. a monthly 
A job that I had privy to the one I have now. Mm. I don't know that you used it right yeah, there. Yeah, it's not. No? No. You just shortened the word previous. Oh. Yeah. Previ. <laughs> Pre- what? <laughs> what does privy mean then? Privy like means like you're you a, part, in a part of a part. Yeah. Part of the contract you were given in a lot of times in contract. Oh, so too. privy doesn't mean like previously. No, no, that's <laughs> that's previ, which is not a word. What the <laughs> was that? <laughs> oh, that was Couch Guy's hat just went screaming across the floor. I think he's having a diabetic episode. Oh. How many people have you used that word with wrong today? <laughs> Somebody just walks you, away. Thinks, just you guys. Oh, dumbass, you know, you know how to use the word right. What an idiot. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Words is hard, boys. I'll tell you that. Uh, yeah, so, I, I, yeah, well, there goes that deal there. Man, I really felt smart, but now I am not. Dave, way to really cut him off at the knees. Yeah, I really do. Uh, sh- sh- yeah. Shank me right in the calf there, bud. Uh, that's okay. Uh, I like being the brunt of your guys' uh, laugh. <laughs> in the words of Dusty Slay, yeah, we're having a good time. <laughs> we're having a good time. You ever Did you watch that special? I watched part of it. Yeah, we're having asleep. a good time. Fell asleep. What a stab. <laughs> That's okay. That was more of a... He's not a friend of the show, so... Yeah, he might be. Have you heard of... Um, he was on Pardon My Take this week. Um, I'm trying to think. He did an interview with that Bobby... Bobby Lee? No, he does it. Yeah, he does a podcast with Bobby Lee. The redheaded uh, guy? Yes. Andrews. Andrew... Uh, um, Santafoni or Santafoni? Santiago. Is it? I don't know. No. Yeah. What the hell's his name? Bad friends. It's Andrew something. Yes. But he did that interview with that uh, Bobby Arloff, B O B B I, Artoff. Is that a female then? Yes, Andrew Santino. Is Santino. The, he's the redheaded guy. And then what's Bobby what's her name? Bobby. He did the interview in the golf cart. Yeah, and he just roasts her about being fat. Yeah. So he. <laughs> She's like, uh, she's an influencer herself, right? Yeah, and so and she does these like show uncomfortable sometimes. interview questions where she's like, so. Dave, what is it to have to be special needs to wear those uh, rose-colored glasses? <laughs> like in that kind of tone. And uh, so he talks about it on part of my take. He's like, yeah, she was like 45, 40 minutes late. And the whole bit, like they wanted him to teach her to like how to like, teach her to do stand up. And he's like, I don't want to do that. It's like, so what are we going to do? He's like, well, we're just going to go play golf because that's what I like to do in my free time. Yeah. And so he was at the driving range and she was like 40 minutes late. So he just kind of like playfully started cutting in on her. And she kind of just kept rolling with it. So that's why, like, all of it is done, like, in that awkward. <laughs> and I guess he said that uh, she had kind of went after his podcast partner, Bobby Lee. So he was doing it for Bobby a little bit. But there was that one point where he's like, yeah, you know, I've got a really great female assistant, like, probably my favorite. Works really hard. Does a great job. So I pay her less money. <laughs> he, the one question, she said, are you a lizard? Like, <laughs> And they're like, if she said, How, like, she's big, like, would you rate me? Like, what would you say I was? Or what would you rate yourself? And yeah. he said something like a solid six or some shit yeah. like that. And he, she said, Well, he told her, He's like, Well, I think you're fat. And like, you, you there's no way you're a six because you're way too fat to be a six. <laughs> and this chick is like a little bitty yeah. ass, you know. Well, then there was like a part where they were talking about. <clears throat> like groceries being yeah. expensive. How do you say Altoff? A L T A. But she was in the news for something. Like she did an interview with somebody, and then her marriage was like over. She did a Drake interview. Oh, was this when Drake leaked his footage of his? Uh, Holy hog? shit! Wow, he what d- a can. Was it? He, was he he is that real? Talking shit about Post Malone. Was that Drake or is that somebody? That was somebody else. Somebody was talking shit about Post. Yeah, he went on a podcast. It wasn't Drake though. It was some. I think he's a podcaster, not a musician. Anyway, sorry, I got. Yeah, no, yeah, okay. we got off track on all of it. But yeah, it's a funny bit. Yeah. And she's like, somebody I think commented was like. Well, then she sh- she she pay less taxes or some shit, and he's like, "Who's yeah, funny, Mark? Is it Ma- Marco?" It says, Hello. Bobby denies copying funny Marco in new interview. Bobby addresses claims of copying funny Marco. I've n- I don't know who that. I don't is. know who that is. Yep, that maybe that's who you were trying to talk about. I guess I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Back to original. <clears throat> Hopefully, quarter two looks better. Yeah. Yeah. Can't look worse. Yeah. Well, it could be. Uh, yeah, it could be a lot. Yeah, it worse. could be worse. We could all um, 
Well, that eclipse is supposed to be shutting the country down. Oh, oh this sorry. this area. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know what the government's moving through that they don't want people to see, but <laughs> for that four and a half minutes, while well, Indiana, Oklahoma. Four and a half, hell, it's like two minutes and 36 seconds around no, here. No, it's hell, a little bit higher. be looking up before plenty early. It'll be rolling right through hmm. interstate. This is clear. I don't know. Hey, the helicopters <clears throat> flew over again. Yeah. Oh, a uh, friend of the show was talking about that and said you can get on that. There's like an app mm-hmm. and you can join it free, but you only have like a week of it free. But it's a, basically all the flight plans. And if you know what day it is, there's some there. dude that has been posting photos of those mm-hmm. around the East Coast. And it's all like a he's he might be a tin hat tin foil hat guy, but he's like, buckle up, it's begun. And it was literally aliens. Just, yeah, like just shit tons of circles of like one plane that was literally flying in circles for like twelve hours, like just right around the city. Like I don't know what the hell it was. Well, he was probably uh, Kim trailing him. Yeah, that's what, I think that that there. may have been something to do with it, like yeah. something like that. You know? Oh yeah, spreading heavy metal. Or it couldn't be the guy that this. <laughs> What's happening? Well, it sounds like you dropped the board and hit four buttons. Man, he's talking about aliens and chemtrails and everybody screams. <laughs> Don't mind me. We're still recording. This. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, I've cleaned house and there's no bucket to be had anymore. Just undo those cords. Don't f*** in the drawer. Hmm. <laughs> Oh. Okay. There. Well, it was heavy drawer. We're back online now, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, we don't. All right, cut. I'll do better. Hopefully, I'll we don't mine. cut anything of that out because this is great content. Uh, Dave, I literally thought my skin was going to come off my body. <laughs> <laughs> I scared them because f- those f-ing sounds, the volume is on four thousand right now. <laughs> Thought Uncle Sam was dropping nukes. <laughs> yeah, like, that's what I'll talk you. I'll show you best. Just talk about Kim Trails. Your TikTok's listening. China gave it to Putin, and he's yeah. going to drop a nuke on our ass. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Dave? Oh, come on. Let's talk about Antarctica. What do you got, Dave? Just Antarctica altogether. You ever just wonder about it and what we're doing there? And, like, we got this whole giant uh, chunk of land uh-huh. that they say nobody owns. Nobody has claim to. There's no government there, but it has its own money. And people live there and work there all the time. So why can't we claim it like the explorers did? They didn't. So there's seven nations that have state claim, and the U.S. has not state claim, but still reserves the right to. But they say it's all just for science, and they got little ports you can go into and take your little cruise and spend millions of dollars to go look at the ice. But there's something. There's got to be something under there to keep everybody going back, but keep it so. Secret. How did what? What do you mean by Antarctica has its own money, the, its own currency? currency. You know, we have dollars, and like the Vietnamese. What's have it dongs. called? It's like uh, <laughs> the Vietnamese have dongs. That's what their the money's Vietnamese called. Dong. Uh, you know. Wow. D o n g. Huh. I don't like the Chinese don't... have the yen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You uh, know, hey, you got ruples, francs, mm-hmm. quid. Quid. Do you know that quid? Loonies and toonies up in Canada. One quid is also a British pound. pound. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. I thought quid and was different than mm-hmm. pound. I thought that's what you tried to catch sharks with. I learned no, that's a squid. Mm-hmm. I learned that put the I, quid on the hook. That's that <laughs> chum. Good Not God. chum. No, it's I learned that about uh, on that show that I watched this week. The gentleman. Mm. Oh, look at you. Yeah, there's lots of currencies though. Hmm. Antarctica currency? Currency, yeah. So huh. what's your theory, Dave? I don't know. I don't have one. I want to know an- more about the Antarctic it. dollar. Yeah, but it's not a U.S. dollar. No, it ain't. It's like doesn't look anything like it. And I think it's like $42 is exchange rate. It takes like 42 American dollars to get one Antarctic dollar. What? Search that exchange rate. Put exchange rate behind the... Uh, try 63.91. It's gone up. Should have got that on 4X. Holy shnikes. Yeah. Why is that? Because it takes well, so long to there's, get there? There's only, well, it's not that. There's nobody there. So it's a supply and demand. They're not just printing money like the U.S. government handing it out to everybody like Easter baskets or those little f- 
and Bibles they give away at school. Huh. So the gosh dang, they probably only made 5,000 of them, you know, back in 1947 when Walt Disney went there when they explored it the first time. He's credited with... What? Yeah, they were trying to find the edge of heaven Walt, or something. I think Walt might be a little bit of a shady dude. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he's he had... Tons of hate in his heart. He did didn't you like say? Jewish did you people. ever see the conspiracy about that each Disney princess represents a different mental illness? Have you seen that? Well, who told you that theory? It's. It, it, I read an article about it. Well, which one's ADHD? Me. If I was a princess, but no, You're it's pretty uh, big, goddamn princess. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> a lot of a lot of ass to put in one of them dresses. <laughs> big beautiful I'm bitch. A princess. You're a big goddamn princess. <laughs> big, big beautiful bitch. That's what I am. Disney princess. Uh, you guys are gonna have to talk for a little bit while well, I try to I'd find this. I'd say it doesn't have anything to do with mental illnesses because some of them came out so early that mental illness wasn't even really something they talked about. Yeah, they just locked you away somewhere. You, Disney princesses uh, represent different disorders. Maybe newer ones. Snow White, OCD. Bullshit. Cinderella, complex trauma. Didn't exist. Anymore. Alice in Wonderland, schizophrenia. No, no, Sleeping Beauty, maladaptive daydreaming. <laughs> Ariel. Insomnia. Disposophobia. So she's a hoarder. Ariel was a hoarder because mm, of all of her. I'm sure where you're going with that. Uh, hoarder, yeah. Bell, schizoid personality disorder, because she saw uh, the beast. That they wasn't said actually there. they said it was an uh uh Stockholm syndrome, where they loved to, they love they learned to love their captor. Mm -hmm. That was a uh, that's Bell. Uh, Jasmine amazing. was a uh, oppositional defiant disorder. I think we get the gist of the list. And then uh, Pocahontas was just a plain ass depression. Yeah. Mm. She was a sad little engine. Girl. I think that's something that somebody that like is probably on uh, medical leave from work and nothing better to do made that up. No, I th because I'm telling you, when those came out, those those disorders didn't exist. They weren't in the uh, DS5. Is that what it is? DM, DM, sliding up DM in them DMs. DMT. Just say it out loud. DMT. DM5. D. S M B D S five D S M up. What?
like you, you were joking. <laughs> he decided preview that, uh, <laughs> that he was going to do something like that on this episode. Oh, shit. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> would you go to Antarctica? Uh, yeah, because I want to see what it's all. But like if you Google Maps it, the little villages, little ports are, you can see pretty well what's there. But most of it's like pixelated out. So I don't know. It's just when you zoom in real tight, you mean? Yeah, it's like a it's like a computer generated graphic of the terrain, but it's not a real picture. Censorship at its finest. Because because they couldn't take it, or because you well, think the satellite to- doesn't just bounce around Antarctica. I guess it. I don't know. I imagine we got some flat earthers out of there and be like, "That's just proof that it's not a globe, or else we'd have pictures of it." You fat. God dang. Wow. Sons of bitches. That sounded exactly like TikTok user 679. <laughs> what a but wild what know. a wild way to think too. Like the flat earther. The flat earther yeah, thing. Yeah, that blows my mind. I've never really spent Who's, any time. Who do you think, getting who do you think is the most uh predominant flat earther? Kyrie Irvin. Oh, I don't know any That's he is. People. He's a big flat earther guy. I really? think it was I think it's Kyrie Irvin. Is that a basketball player? Yeah. yeah. I thought that name was familiar. I don't understand the th- the basketball Theory. court would be crooked if the world wasn't flat. Is that what he says? I don't know. I can only assume. Not. It's hard to say. Huh. The Flat Earth Society, founded by Samuel Shenton in 1956. Are those, are those the ones? Back in 1956. Yeah, I mean, I just I thought, it it was, could be. I thought it was something new. No, 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 no. Sounds like it's been around since 56. I bet they're still burning witches over there. In Antarctica? Wherever the Flat Earth Society oh, is Oh, the Flat Earth Society? Hmm. Where, are the, where is the Flat Earth Society headquartered? Man, I don't know. doesn't say. Mesa. <laughs> uh, it's in the UK, maybe. Michael Marshall, Pro- Michael Marshall, Project Director of the Good Thinking Society in the UK, talks about Flat Earth. What did he say? Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's an audio thing. I'm not going to play it. Oh, okay. Appreciate that. Perfect. <clears throat> How about a movie review? Nor am I going to talk about any more Disney princesses. Perfect. So, so I don't know, man. Antarctica, Antarctica is a wild deal. Giant cover up. That's a wild deal. Uh, I know people that have been on Arctic. I wonder if there's a portal to the moon there. Oh, shit. Like a time warp? Yeah. That's a, yep. I'm so I know people that have been on like Arctic cruises before, like up like Alaska. Yeah, we're on the whole other opposite. Yeah, like Ant- on the other Antarctic. Yeah, the so part the Arctic or, and then the Antarctic, like the opposite of. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, we're. Is that why it's named that? You're going up. I here just convinced in, myself. That's why they call it Arctic, Arctic, Ant- Antarctic. Antarctic. Yeah, makes sense. Mm-hmm. Probably what it is. That's a pretty good connection of the old. Where docks. is the most t- cold? Where is the coldest temperature ever recorded? Probably farthest from the sun. Which would be depends on the time of year. Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> what did Max say the other day? Max said something about, "Hey, did you know that Jupiter is a big gas planet?" <laughs> and I was like, "What did you just say?" And he said, "Jupiter, Dad. Do you know it's a big gas planet, biggest one we got?" And I was like, "He said like big gas planet." Yeah, I know. But I he got said it. it like you know. Yeah. He, he said. <laughs> I was like, what did you say? It was yeah. a good one. Uh, I'm I sure guess William said bullshit the other day. Nice. At school? No, I just wish, talking to his brothers. I uh, wish that we could have recorded, which I think she did, but it's probably been four or five phones ago for me. But it was the twins on the baby monitors, and Evelyn was just, like, letting her rip. <laughs> like, saying the F word and like all kinds of shit. And they were like little, little. <laughs> and she was like, oh my God. And so she'd like instantaneously get her phone out to start recording. It was gold. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where they'd hear that in your household. Well, geez, get over it. For f- sake. Coldest temperature in Antarctica was ever recorded at an, oh, wow, negative 136. Mm-hmm. That's when- how they keep that portal to space cool. That's what August it is. 10th of 2010. Alien, uh... And they say global warming's real. Yeah. 
August 10th of 2010. So does the space Ariana. travel just get real hot? You think that's why they got to keep it well, cold? Well, it'd have to take uh, have you ever probably seen, extreme energy. I was gonna, have you ever seen the... Uh, or shoot them through space and time and reassemble them back to Have them. you ever seen the, the, yeah. the re-entry craft when they come back in or... Yeah, they get hot. I would only think that they would get real hot, yeah. Well, makes sense. Um, do we have any Dutchman wonders? Hey, we do. <laughs> God, <Hey>. hey. <laughs> All right, Papa. <laughs> That's that spring air. <laughs> spring air getting to you. Hey, here we go, though. We have a dear Dutchman today. Dear Dutchman, there's a common saying that marriage is hard. Statistically speaking, it looks like it, it looks like the 50% divorce rate is generally still true. Second, marriage rates are worse, but isn't it interesting people dive back into the institution of marriage again? Still hopeful enough to remarry, but haven't made changes. So, do you think marriage is hard, and if so, how and why? Or, if you disagree, what makes it easy? Is there any advice you would give to engaged couples? What do you wish you'd known before you were married? What can married couples do when they hit rough patches? Sincerely, joy, or woe? Crazy that this dear Dutchman would come in as two wives would be here, guys. My gosh. And they say everything in life is about timing. So, uh, wow. Go ahead. Well, go ahead, guys. I think Justine said the word <clears throat> said the other day something about. I don't remember how. I know we don't talk about religions, but he said God. She said something about like God puts. Uh, my advice: don't do it. She says. <laughs> uh, God said God gives his toughest battles to his best soldiers or some shit like that. I don't know what that means. I guess I do, but I don't know. We went to marriage counseling one time, and I thought the bitch was a quack. But uh, I mean. Marriage so which is, one's the warrior and which one's the problem? Well, I don't know. <laughs> and that's another one too. Like, hey, are you part of the are you are you gonna be part of the problem or part of the solution? So you well let's I mean? break so let's break this dear Dutchman down from the first question. So these people that go for second, third, fourth marriages, why can why do you think people continue to do that? Because they're codependent and don't know how to live by themselves. Well, god damn, Dave, let us have a conversation about some hypothetical, not break it right down. Why do they have to race right into marriage, though? I mean, why can't you not because just... Because they're codependent and can't function by themselves. What does it I mean, matter? I mean, they can, be, they can be codependent and not be married. But they probably there's probably that, I don't want to say antiquated thought, but there's that thought that if we're going to live this lifestyle together, we, we need to be married. We had this whole elaborate plan back Jealousy. in the day whenever Ownership. she was going to go back to school that we were going to get a divorce, but yet not change anything in our life. And she was going to be a single mother with three kids. Going to college. Going to college for free. So you're going to commit fraud. Yes. A hundred percent. I mean, we obviously didn't, you know, because now we'll be uh, paying on student loans till we're dead. But I think they're going to get audited for the third time. Yeah, yeah I think so. Guarantee it. You're welcome. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so do you think marriage is hard? And if so, how and why? Yes, marriage is hard. I disagree. Huh? I disagree. What do you mean? I don't think marriage is hard. Yeah, you wouldn't. <laughs> I'll just I'll just leave it Why? at that. I'll just leave it no. at that while on air. Hey. I'll just leave no. it at that. Let's talk. I here's why I think it's not hard. I think there's challenges. Wake I up, think breakfast is on the table. I leave all day, get drunk, come home, dinner's on the table. Yeah, Water's play clean. basketball nine days a week, coach baseball, go play golf and golf league. I mean, what's so hard about it? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. Your wife is a goddamn saint. She I'll just is? tell that. I oh. listen. I it I'm listen. Not, <laughs> here, listen. <laughs> I'm not saying that it doesn't take work. You feel that on the back of your neck? Because I can feel it. <laughs> Man, I can feel it. What the stairs back there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, she's pretty hard right now. Staring hard. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> but I, I mean. I don't know. I yeah. guess it's just because our partnership works very well mm -hmm. that we tackle things together, mm -hmm. that it's not one person trying to pull the boat themselves. I know that there's times when with my activities, especially in the springtime with baseball, that I am very absent. 
But I also, the other 10 months of the year that aren't baseball, try to make sure I do more than what needs to be. Right. So, I mean, I don't know. My wife told my mom today that I was a terrible housewife since I've been home. Mm -hmm. Like cleaning and shit like that. I'm not surprised by that. Well, you're on the disabled list with bum leg. Yeah. What happens if you fall down the stairs? I was on the the IR for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I was. That's okay. I mean, I... I had to ride the DL bench for a while, but you know I'm hopefully coming back in action. So yeah, um, I just said something today about wanting to get outside and mow and like do some tractoring and stuff. So I, I I'm I was waiting for her to say like you walk of, before you run. Yeah, you <laughs> piece of shit. Like you should be in run there. the old vacuum cleaner before oh, yeah. you run the old John Deere. Yeah, like stuff like something along those lines. So is there any advice you would give to an engaged couple? You're at the wedding. They're like, "Hey, don't do it. Run. Run no, you your wouldn't. Life. No, you wouldn't. No. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It just depends. You know what I mean? Like, if I have seen people that I have, you ever seen somebody that you knew that was going to get married to a girl, and or a you, guy, or a guy, and was like, "Hey." I'll bet you a thousand bucks they don't make it. <laughs> they don't make it till next month, and it happens. Like, have you ever seen that? Yeah, yeah. So have I. You know, and it's like, I don't. Uh, I don't know. Like, I, I, like, how do you say that? You know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't tell one of your best buddies, like, "Hey, man." I, no, I, but you're trying to. So what you would do is recognize what their problem is, <laughs> and be like, "Hey." Buddy, like, she don't like you drinking. You need to soften well, up in the drinking the before you get into this. It's a marriage problem. The reason it's a marriage problem is because there's a personal problem, and all the advice in the world isn't going to change somebody's habits or decisions or characteristics. If it was something that you could just say, hey, this is not working out, uh, change that, then it's not a problem. Yeah. It's the the things that you – it's just not worth you giving can't the get advice past. because the person has to recognize that, oh, this is going to play in a while. Yeah. I – I think the other thing, too, is if I were to give advice, the old timers at these weddings you'd go to, you know, hey, don't go to don't go to bed angry at each other. Right. You know what, though? I don't I think that's bullshit. (laughs) I think if you have if you have a legitimate axe to grind, some of these things have to just play out. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be if if your wife picked a fight with you at 10 o'clock and you go to bed at 11. Yeah. You're going to go to bed angry. So don't think, don't live in this falsehood that these problems resolve because think, we went to bed. I think a big thing, too, is pick your battles. You know what I mean? Like, and you're not real good at that. Well, no, I know. But, like, pick your battles. You know what I mean? Like, I, but I, I have a big, so she is very type A, you know, like, obviously run, running the show, <laughs> rule the roost, like, I wear the pants and, and, and I'll, I will agree that sometimes it's tough for me to accept that, you know, because I want to be the big king dingling, you know, but it's uh, pick you've your, been stuck on king dingling for like this is a, probably the fourth episode. Yeah, who said that? You have. I have said the word king dingling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Preview to this episode, yeah. you have preview. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Last. Time. I don't know, man. I, it's the most cliche thing I've ever heard in my entire life, but it always comes back to being true. Sometimes you just got to swallow your pride and, and, you know, happy wife, happy life. I mean, I, don't break down and be some baby back bitch, but I think it it comes back to the, you it's know. It's a mutual respect. Yeah, if you don't is. have mutual respect, yeah, it's, it's like, not going to work. You know, these guys, these I used to work with a bunch of old timers who are like, you goddamn women need to be in the kitchen making a sandwich for me and doing the dishes and they don't need to be working. They need to be at home raising them kids and all this shit. And I'm God, like, we'd be broke. Yes. Like those, <laughs> we'd be in the poor house. Those days are over, dude. Like they are gone. Yeah. Long gone. I, and continuing on, what do you wish you would have known before you were married? Well, I don't know about me, but she's told me about 900 times that I catfished her. Because she thought I was real handy and like a real carpenter and a fixer upper type. I don't guy. know where you would have ever thought that. Well, maybe because my grandpa building trades oh. and my grandpa is a woodworking kind of guy. I, I think she knew it was baked into the cake. <laughs> uh, 
Dave, what do you think? What do you wish you would have known before you were married? Mm. I don't know that I would. It had probably done me good to know that I was going to do okay work wise. I don't like that. There is a whole lot of early outside in, stress in my young days, not knowing what the hell I was going to do or oh, how that yeah. was going to work. Didn't know which way your canoe was pointed. Yeah. yeah. You're kind of worried about it. Yeah. I think I wish I would have known how quick it all goes by the early years. Like when it's just. You, like, oh, yeah. Before you have kids. Yeah. Yeah. Because that changes your relationship entirely. Changes the marriage entirely. 100%. Yeah, but think where you wouldn't be, though. If you didn't have, oh boy, hi. Well, that's a whole different. Yeah, thing. yeah. Huh. Things would be all right. Uh, <laughs> what can married couples do? <laughs> there you go. He say, like, I don't think marriage is hard. <laughs> I think I'd be all right. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Exhibit A. <laughs> what can married couples do when they hit a rough patch? Pick your battles, man. Pick your battles. If she says leave her alone, then just leave her the. F- alone you know what i mean go in the living room and watch tv you know give her some space yeah you know what i mean uh if you deserve your ass ripping take it you know i don't know that's really hard for me she's probably thinking you lying son of a bitch because there's i mean it's tough for me to admit whenever she's in the room but there's a lot of times where she's right and and i'll agree you're not surprising anybody that's sitting at this table with you right now i know I yeah, I knew that preview to you saying it. Shut up. <laughs> Get over it. I think that's a new shirt that's all design. I got. That's all I got. Smoke Dragon? <clears throat> I don't know. You just read that question through one more time for me here. What can married couples do when they hit a rough patch? Uh, man, I think you just got to be tough. You just can't be whining. Like, yeah. I think people are too easy to quit because mm. something's hard, and they thought that they watched all these depressed princesses on Disney, and <laughs> yeah. it just works so easy. <laughs> But none of it's easy. You got somebody you're spending your whole ass life with all the time. You get yep. you go to work, you just want to go home, and then somebody wants something from you. Yeah. Especially once you have kids. You just can't be that happy with somebody all the time. Right. Just yeah. little noises they make or ticks they have. Or like how they chew their the food when you're things sitting. things that I do to piss my wife off. Yeah, how uh, they chew their food when you're in bed at night and you're wanting to do a little snack and you're both watching the same movie. Oh, and, oh. And snacking in the bed, huh? And the chewing sounds. Oh, like yeah. a yeah, that's a tough yeah. spot. Anyway, I think, it's got to be tough. It's just it's not always. I think the biggest look you got to spread some shit rough. to grow some flowers. Hey, you know Amen, I mean? brother. Yeah. <laughs> I think you have to also keep issues isolated and don't have these arguments that are just the whole kit and caboodle. I think when you hit rough patches. Oh, you, you mean, yeah, like shit rolls downhill? Like you, yes. You, you pick the scab off of this one, and then now we're talking about something that happened five yeah. months ago? Yeah. It needs to. It never happened to me. You I need to stay to. on a singular track. I heard one guy and tell work through his it together. wife one time. He said, would you shut the f*** up? You sound like a broken record. You sound like a record player that just won't stop. <laughs> it didn't work out well yeah. for him. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, sincerely, Joy or Woe, thanks for the questions. Obviously, we're very blessed to have wonderful women oh, in yeah. our life. Marriage is bliss, man. Yeah, it is. I'd do it 10 more times if I could. I was one and done. Zero interest in getting remarried if I ever had to. No, not a chance. Yeah. Uh, hey, but it's that time for the Merkley and Sons Choice Cut. Let's questions hear, of the week. Hear about the boys. Yeah, our friends, Bradley and John Boy. Greenwell. He shows up for shit. shit. Welcome to Merkley and Sons Choice Cuts Question of the Week for the Fellas, sponsored by Merkley and Sons, the ultimate destination for meat enthusiasts. As we gear up for the upcoming baseball season, there's something missing from the ballpark experience that's got us longing for the good old days. Picture this, the crack of the bat, the roar of the crowd, and the scent of sizzling meat wafting through the air. It's a scene straight out of a baseball lover's dreams. But amidst some excitement, there's one thing that truly completes the experience. A seasoned Merkley patty on a bun. Yeah, you heard it right. Nothing quite hits the spot like sinking your teeth into a juicy, flavorful Merkley patty. Expertly seasoned to perfection. It's the epitome of ballpark bliss. All right. And we're back. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, Kelsey Ernie sent some questions in a long time ago. I swung in today and... Seen the old uh, 
utility billing squad that we were lost since i sent these back last july and haven't heard them on the show that's kind of like our buddy mike kramer i think he he didn't send no questions back on the it's youtube a, video. it's a fluke yeah, yeah unbelievable send them again what has been your favorite age so far for you and your kids you think she means together or individual like independent what has been your favorite age so far for you and your kids so I guess maybe what age your kids has been a good one. Mm. Whenever all three of them didn't require their ass to be wiped anymore. And then when the twins could start making their own ramen noodles. It's a good spot. Like that was a good spot. Like whenever you could go on vacation to the beach and not have to worry about them dying without your utmost attention at all times. And we could like both sit in a chair together and have an adult beverage and just kind of like, you know what I mean? And kind of like relax for a minute. Like that was a, that was pretty awesome. Dave at that age. I don't know what that age. I don't know when that was, but then uh, all three of mine are different. And I think it's just as I've grown, it's different, but like Wyatt, I liked about the time he was done with diapers and mm -hmm. could talk to you and tell you why he was pissed off or crying. Exactly. With Will Weston rather got a little younger yet. And then with William it's been even like, I don't know. I've appreciated the younger stages, the right. farther I've gone out. Right. I think cause mine are all, yeah, I mean, Zoe will be six here in April, but, I don't know. I think kind of like where Zoe's at right now, there's a little bit of level of independence. Yeah. Getting dressed on your own, yeah. like kind of being organized and ready to go and motivated to go. Yeah. That's nice. That's really the swing <laughs> And of before things. you know it, they'll all three be there. And oh, you yeah. Can, you know. Yeah. Four yeah. and five will catch up. What is your go-to lazy dinner for you and or the family? Chicken nuggets in the air fryer. Yep. Hands down, lazy meal, chicken nuggets in the air fryer. Buffalo Wild Wings, garlic Parmesan sauce at more for less in the bottle. Yeah. Sometimes a bag of steamed broccoli in the microwave. Put a little uh, P and S P and G on there yep. and some uh, uh, Parmesan cheese. Yep. And then if I don't, if there's not enough broccoli for me, I'll throw a salad together real quick, and then just uh, eat nugs and a salad. Mm. Ours is. Uh, quick one for me and the kids is just chicken nugs in the air fryer nothing else no sides no it's a quick easy dinner it's chicken nugs mm. yeah side of water side of water <laughs> we'll do a uh, regular old regular 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 old ham sandwich oh with some wow. tater chips for supper kids yeah they like they like sandwich yeah yeah so it's not too bad uh what is your favorite thing to do in the summertime? Hmm. Sit in a lawn chair, drink beer, go swimming. Uh, oh shit, I don't know. Mowing grass is pretty fun. I don't know. Yeah. Lawn chair, sitting, swimming. Yeah, I like drinking beer in the pool. That's probably my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Golfing. Is your bed made right now? No. Hell no. No. Prevy to my wife getting into it, it was. We make our bed every day. It's not going to surprise you. I know. Wild. Yeah. Uh, what are balancing the checkbook every morning. What is one thing you regret spending money on? Like you regret it because of. Like you spent, like you regret buying this X, Y, and Z, whatever it may be. Something you regret spending money on. Dave, you got one? No regrets, bro. No regrets? Oh, I'm sure there's something I regret spending money on. Oh, nothing is really... Coming. Lottery tickets that you don't win. Yeah, but if you don't, you don't play, you can't win. <laughs> um, oh, man. I, I really can't. I don't know. Yeah, nothing jumps out. Mine's that four-foot uh, brush hog that I bought, that heavy son of a bitch. Four or five years ago, you remember? Bought that little brush hog for the Kubota to pull. And I regret buying it because I had it for about a month, and then I resold it. Realized that. The warden says gas station trash. 
I would only assume she was talking about like food, like some sort of gas station food or something. What movie do you enjoy quoting the most? Hmm? What movie do you enjoy quoting the most? Step Brothers. I mean, that's got a bunch. Man, I don't know. Um, it's probably a mix up between, or a toss up rather, between Tombstone and The Big Lebowski. Oh, yeah. I don't know that I do a bunch of movie quotes. Yeah. Not, I mean, hard to get a movie and putting that bed together every morning. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Mm. How do you usually answer the telephone? Yeah. <laughs> It depends on if I know the number. Yep. I'm a yellow guy if it's the number, but if I don't know who it is, I try to sound real pissed off like you're interrupting my whole life. Yeah. yeah. If I don't know the number, this is Casey. That's how I answer. Mm -hmm. If I know, it's usually, yo, what's up? What can I do for you? Yeah. Because usually people only call me when they need free legal advice or veterinarian advice or <laughs> other things. So I just, yeah. just jump to it. What? That's about it. <laughs> Morning or evening? For what? Which do you prefer, Dave? Oh, evening, hands down. I really enjoy my mornings. Yeah. I'm, I'm an evening guy. Would you rather sleep in late or take a long nap midday? We, I've been sleeping in late a lot here lately. I'll take that. Okay. Um, neither. I'd rather get up early and have a small nap, but I don't like sleeping a lot during the day. I feel like I've wasted too much. I take time. the nap, midday nap for sure. Uh, what world record do you think you have a shot at beating? <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I I, I don't know. <sighs> the world record. I guess, I don't know, <laughs> being the dumbest human in this room, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I'm a pretty powerful estimator with uh, relatively low uh, input as far as historical data to work from. So I feel like if somebody could tie that into a world record like most correct Why couldn't guesses, you just say you're a pretty good guesser? Okay. Huh? Why did you have to? Just say why did you have to be estimator. like super smart talk? Why can't you just be blue collar on that, David, and just say, David. "I'm a pretty good guesser." <laughs> uh, Rain Man, I, I think powerful estimator is probably blue collar. Yeah, of course it is. What was I thinking? <laughs> what about you, Esquire? What you got? I don't have anything in mind. No, I can't either. On your toilets, elongated seat or round seat? Elongated. Definitely elongated. You don't want his pecker rubbing in front of the bowl, you know, like we talked earlier. <laughs> oh, Big Dick Dave. Yeah, oh, Big Dick Dave. <laughs> ADA height or closer to the ground? Oh, tall for show. Yeah. Oh, toilet? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I like him tall. Yeah. I like him tall. Yeah, and then she had a question about wiping. We've answered it before. I mean, you guys are bidet guys. Yeah. Anyway, get the job done. Hey, Kelsey, thanks for the questions. Don't we rub love your them. eyes. You get the long, we love long them. list of them there. Them we appreciate it. Keep sending them in. Fellas, it's time for Here us go. to go. And it is time for the last pass presented by Hof Outdoor Power. The last pass is proudly sponsored by Hof Outdoor Power. As March unfolds, signaling the arrival of warmer days and sunnier skies, we bid farewell to the snow and embrace the promise of a vibrant spring season. And with it comes a new set of tasks. Mowing grass, trimming around the house, and nurturing our outdoor spaces to perfection. But fret not, dear homeowner, for the solution to all of your lawn care needs await you at Hope Outdoor Power. Why waste precious time scouring for deals when you can trust the best in the business to handle your outdoor power equipment requirements. Whether you're in the market for a reliable Cub Cadet or a powerful Kubota mowing machine, Hofe Outdoor Power has you covered. So why wait? Visit the fellows at Hofe Outdoor Power today and let us help you turn your lawn dreams into reality. All right, big fella, last time around the table, what do you got? Here we go. Uh, so like I said earlier in the show, April 6th is the comedy night at the Gaslight featuring yours truly, uh, Curtis Crow, and 
uh, Chicago DJ, uh, Chicago comedian DJ Ribsky. Get your tickets. You can find the link in the description. Uh, go on there. Get your tickets bought. Uh, it should be a fun time. Starts at nine. Uh, we're just going to do a little bit, and then Curtis and DJ are going to take over, and should be a night full of laughs. Uh, I think John might do some drink specials. Not sure on that. That's just what I've been hearing, but uh, should be a good time. But other than that, um, guys, there's people mowing grass. Mm. Um, the smell of onions and the fresh chopped uh, first mowing is going down. Um, mow responsibly. That's all I got. Yeah. Smoke dragon. Uh, well, I had me a rough week. Here we go. At work the other day. You had a Just, rough week at work the other day? The other week. Oh, you had a rough week. I was thinking about it the other day. I apologize oh, okay. for my missing. I'm just trying to get clarity. Yeah, that's your job. Yeah. Uh, at any rate, I realized that I was getting kind of in my own head about stuff. You know, you were uh, you were a real um, mother f- to be around. Yeah, yeah, sourpuss yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. okay. So anyway, I had to get back to my, you know, center, center my chakra. Yeah. But that got me thinking of today's... The Galactivators. The Galactivators. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We need to see if we can... I know. I know. Yeah, I got you. We need to see if they would do an interview with Uh, us. You betcha. We can zoom them in. Hey, uh, give give it to us, baby. Uh, But anyway, uh, do yourself a favor. Don't fail to realize that you may be your own problem. Introspection can lead to regrets, but regrets lead to reflection, and reflection leads to wisdom. So, uh, you know, go out and do good things. Yeah. Well, that's a good one. That's great stuff. Casey, what you got, man? Uh, Meat Man likes it. He's slapping his hands back there. Like a walrus. <laughs> yeah. He likes a train seal. Art, art, art. Throw him a, throw him a fish. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, just busy. Yeah, man. It just seems like. David was talking about that today. He said something about what time are you going to come over? And I'm like, well, I'm at the daddy daughter dance. It doesn't get over till. Thanks 7. for bringing that up again. Gosh, My God, you shit. freaking killed me all. It's got to be home at seven thirty, and he's like, yeah, oh yeah, I can't. Anyway, somebody's got practice till eight, and I just said, yeah, tis the season, man. Yeah. And it is, it, and it is, and it's just, it's t- like, yeah. I know there's text messages I haven't gotten back to. There's other, moving other stuff around. Not involved in much as our stuff. Like it just need that time mm-hmm. to just, yeah. And people have to understand that. Like we, how many? What did we figure it out that day? We got nine kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine kids, three wives, three wives, wives two girlfriends, two side pieces. Not really. That's not, not true. Not no. at all. Esquire not. with a salad fork. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, you know what though? Wouldn't be doing it. Any other way with Peace, love and positivity. Any other two clowns. Amen, bro. And with that, we'll see you down the road next time. Dutchman out.